few days ago it was 72 degrees and it was and now you wake up this morning and there's honestly about an inch or so on the ground I think that, that they said fell uh, it could affect the football game um, there's going to be a, a wet football out there bad footing we'll see how that uh, plays out again both these teams nationally ranked 8-1 5-0 and oh in the GLVC big news for you Indies we take a look at our Prairie Farms player to watch as Toriano Clinton is back in the lineup for UND, the all-time leading rusher in UND history. You see over 900 yards this season, over 4,400 yards in his career. He's the active rushing leader in all of NCAA Division II career rushing yards, the active leader and the UND record holder in career rushing yards and career total touchdowns. Jim, huge for UND to get Toriano Clinton back this afternoon for this game against Truman. Yeah, it is. I mean, he's been out the last three weeks with uh, what is, I guess, described as an ankle injury. And, uh, you know, some of it may have been obviously rehab and getting him stronger. Other part of it might be, you know, they, they played a couple teams. I think that they felt like maybe they could win without him. Uh, they did. And now hopefully he's back to full strength. Yeah, the last few weeks, Jaquan Buchanan was a starter averaging over 134 yards rushing in those three over the last three weeks. So UND in good position at the running back position today against Truman as we take a look at our community hospital sports medicine injury report. UND still without starting quarterback Connor Kennett. He is out for the year with that injury that he suffered against McKendree earlier this season. Christian Conkling starts again this week and also one more injury for the Hounds as they are out. A uh, little bit of their wide receiver and return depth in Marcus Gillum. But as we kind of get ready and look forward to kickoff, Jim, kind of what are your keys to the game for these teams this afternoon here again with this game with championship implications? Well, you know, Matt, both of these teams honestly give up a fair amount of points. Both of them, you know, give up more than 30 a game. And so I think the defense that can actually step up and get a couple stops and get off the field could be a huge key for either ball club. Number two, simply protect the football. We already talked about it. There's about an inch or two of snow. The ball is going to be wet. The footing is going to be poor. Fast starts. UND uh, has scored 209 points in the first half so far this year. That's what they're hoping to do, obviously. Truman State's hoping to prevent that or get a false or a fast start of their own. And then the kicking game. Two really good kickers in this game. Colin Seymour for UND and Ross Grant. Both of these kids are like 33 or 35 for PAT, so just about automatic. And both of them have nine field goals on the season. So it could come down to a, to a field goal or a kick to win this game. And I know we knew, kind of we talked about the weather as well, that it knew it was going to be cold, but you wake up and I think there was a little bit of snow in the forecast, but it may have surprised the amount of snow. How does that, you know, when these coaches woke up this morning, look at the weather, how does that maybe change and what you're telling the guys in the locker room and here in the pregame and maybe some of the things the players were maybe testing out to be prepared to go in a game. Again, neither team really has had, has had to play in snow yet this season. Well, you know, how, how it changes the coaches and what they tell the kids can sometimes be two totally different things. Uh, the coaches probably were scrambling and saying, okay, again, footy's going to be a premium, so we're going to run the ball even more, which both these teams run the ball a lot. I don't know that you can run it much more. Uh, but then what you tell the kids is, guys, this is football, man. You know, this is where we want to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. You got to get them fired up. Uh, it don't have to be true. You just got to get them to buy it. Uh, and, you know, again, expect to see a controlled passing game, a lot of quicks, a lot of short stuff. Uh, slants, comebacks, hitches, and then maybe some hitch and goes or some sluggos, some, some slant and goes. But again, they're going to probably start very, I don't know what the word is, but conservatively in the passing game. Yeah, senior day as well for UND. So some of those emotions on the side of UND as well as they celebrated a just a ton of seniors in pregame ceremonies before this game gets started. You know, getting teams as Jim mentioned, kind of mirror image of each other, both amongst the top teams in the NCAA in rushing offense as well as in rushing defense. The so two teams that really want to run the ball and really good at stopping the run. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out here this afternoon. We'll take a break and come back and get you ready for kickoff for the starting lineups coming next on the ISC and GLBC Sports Network. Tonight's UND broadcast is brought to you by Free Enterprise System, the official travel agency for Greyhound Athletics. Anything else is just a bus ride. By Prairie Farms, we are Indiana's Dairy. By Indiana Members Credit Union, proudly supporting UND Athletics and offering a free UND debit card. Show your school spirit and get yours at imcu.com. By Gordon Flesh, technology that works, people who perform. Please visit us at gflesh.com. By Aqua Systems, 
helping people improve their water since 1959 and a proud sponsor of the UNE Greyhounds. And by the Ray Skillman Auto Group. Go to RaySkillman.com for your best deals. There you see the head coach of the University of Indianapolis, Chris Kievers, in his third season as the head coach, 27 and 7, 18 and 3 in conference games as he leads his undefeated Greyhounds in conference play against undefeated Truman State. This is the third time that these two teams have met in this situation where the winner would win the Great Lakes Valley Conference the previous times in 2013 and during the spring season of 2021, UND 2-0 in those games, winning 21-14 back nine years ago in 2013 and 46-29 in the spring of 2021. This is the 10th all-time meeting between UND and Truman State. UND leads that meeting 8-1 all-time and undefeated in those games played here in Indianapolis. Besides the conference implications, as you see the coin toss going on at midfield, are also the NCAA Division II playoff implications. Again, the top seven teams in Super Region Three, which is the Great Lakes Valley Conference, the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, the MIAA based mostly in Missouri, and then the Great Great American Conference, which is based in Oklahoma and Arkansas. The top seven teams as determined by the NCAA Division II football committee will go to the postseason. Coming into this week, the top seven teams make it. Truman was six, UND was seven. Unlikely that the loser of this game would make it, depending on other things, but most likely the winner will. So UND trying to get back to the playoffs as they have had some success there, but they have not been to the playoffs since 2019. You see Toriano Clinton running off the field and coming off, so we'll get to See what happens here. Jim, you've been involved in a lot of big games, championship type games. What is, how does that change? Or maybe the, you know, UND has kind of been here before. Truman, maybe not as much, but certainly historically a very successful program. But managing those emotions and what these coaches say with, you know, the players know what's on the line. Yeah, they do. And, you know, when I coached, I, I really did always try to make the kids feel like it was just another game. Uh, before we'd go out, I'd say, hey, guys, this is a football game, and you're going to miss blocks, and you're going to miss tackles, and we may fumble the football. And then I, you know, I, I'd look at a kid and say, have you ever missed a block? And the kid's like, yeah, Coach, lost some. <laughs> right, well, you're going to miss some today, too. Don't let the emotions get the best of you. Don't let it get you down. Get up and play the next play. It don't matter whether it's a football game or it's, it's life. The most important play is the next one. And uh, the, the last one's over, can't fix it, can't change it, but you can have an impact on the next one. So that's how I always try to get kids to kind of calm down and relax, let them know, hey, there's going to be ups and downs. You know, and, and, and that's the other one, too. Don't get too high. You know, if we get out to a 14 nothing lead, guys, don't lay down, don't quit, don't think this is easy. It used to really upset me when my players would come off. We'd, we'd go up 14, hey, hi, coach, we got this. Like, Shut up, <laughs> right? We, we still got three and a half quarters of football to play. After the game, you can tell me how we had it, and I'll believe you. And these game, these teams, no stranger to tight games. Just last year, it was a 13 to 10 win for UND in Kirksville, Missouri, against Truman. So they were in a tight game last year, a tight, low-scoring game, which very well the way these defenses play, and again the conditions we could possibly see again today. As we'll get to see the Truman offense first, as UND will kick off Carter Ward, the freshman from Columbus, Indiana taking over as the kickoff specialist for the Hounds over the last couple of weeks. Jack Butchko back deep. Along with, looks like, DJ Flint. And that's Flint. He'll take it from about the 11. Looking for some room and showing good strength to drive forward and get past the 35-yard line. So it'll be a pretty good starting field position for Truman. So we take a look at the starters for Truman. They are led by their running back, Shamar Griffith, as he has been excellent the last couple of weeks as well. The last two weeks, he's had 177 yards against Quincy and 165 yards against McKendry. Nolan Hare has been the starter for several years. The 2020 GLVC Freshman of the Year at quarterback 63% completion percentage. He's top 25 in the NCAA in completion percentage for the Bulldogs. And he'll throw in the opening play of the game. Quick out, short gain as he throws to his tight end, Matt Hall. 
gain of about three, three or four to get this game started. A little quick, uh, maybe an RPO there. It looked like zone reading, and then they just uh, threw the slant. Uh, I love play action on first down. I don't know why more coaches don't do that. Uh, defenses are obviously get to kind of frothing at the mouth, ready to come downhill, play run. And, you know, you give them a little run. It doesn't even have to be a good one. It could be an open hand, and uh, you'll get people to move, and then it, it, it makes passing lanes open up. Truman goes with two tight ends. This is the first look at Shamar Griffith. He runs right into the middle of that UND line and is swallowed up by Dylan Shelton in the middle for minimal, if any, gain for Griffiths, and will bring up third and long. Yeah, you're going to see on the replay here, they actually blitzed right into it, and uh, the left guard had to pick up the blitzer, and that left Shelton uh, basically unblocked and available to maul the ball carrier. Shelton, a player that has come on, kind of started as part of the depth in this defensive line for UND has moved into a position as a starter next to Dennison as it's third and six on the opening drive for Truman. They're one of the best teams in the country. 47% conversion on third down this season. No back in the backfield for Hare. Quick throw out into the flat, and that is his running back, Shamar Griffith, and he'll get past the first down marker before he's knocked out of bounds by Michael Brown. Yeah, you mentioned the third down conversion rate, Matt, and you're right. It's really, honestly, an insane 47%. That's awfully impressive, but not quite as impressive as their fourth down conversion rate, which is 90%. And you think, oh, what, do they go for it once or twice? No, they're 9 of 10. When they go for it on fourth down, they tend to get it. First and 10 at their own 49. So they pick up the first conversion of the day. Right guard Dane Egger trying to clear snow from underneath his feet to get a little footing on this first down play. Play action again. Looking deep down the seam, and it is caught and brought in by Matt Hall, the tight end. He got past Cavante Houston, and a gain of 26 for the Bulldogs. Again, the play action uh, fake. Doesn't have to be premium. Watch on the replay there. A little ball fake there. Nice route, and unfortunately, the ball uh, for Truman State, the ball was not thrown well. Otherwise, that's a touchdown. Yeah, Houston, the safety for UND, kind of saw him come up, had to respect that play action and let Hall, the tight end, big tight end, get behind him. And this is Sutton, the backup quarterback in the game, but they like to run with him as he picks up a nice chunk of yards, about seven yards on first down. Colin Sutton, the sophomore out of Winfield, Missouri, takes the direct snap and gets a nice gain on first down. Well, that's one of the things that the defensive coaches for UND and, and the kids on the field have to be aware of, these personnel changes. You mentioned Sutton. He's ran the ball 32 times for 263 yards, uh, and he does play quarterback, but I think maybe in name only. Uh, he's kind of, I guess, the quasi-wildcat guy, but he can throw it, and he does present that, that dual threat. Yeah, you mentioned the amount of rushes, only seven pass attempts. Handoff inside to Griffith, and he'll be tripped up and brought down by Clay Schulte and bring up a third and short. Well, nice job of Schulte. Now, again, these linebackers are playing downhill, and that's a good thing. You want those kids to hunt, but that does leave you a little susceptible to the play-action pass. There has to be a balance. You know, it's one thing, you know, you want your defensive kids to fly around, 11 guys the ball, uh, but, you know, at the same time, they still have to play gap responsibility first, maintain that gap integrity. Two tight ends out there for the Bulldogs, but they're both slot right. Running back Denham Cook in the backfield. Hare will take it and keep it and look for room. Excuse me, that's Sutton again, and he steps through and picks up the first down and more before he's brought down at the 11-yard line. Yeah, just a pre-designed play, quarterback power. They pull the left guard around. You're going to see the left guard comes around, gets up on the linebacker, and uh, more than enough room there for Sutton, who skips through one tackler and gets more than enough. And again, when that kid's a quarterback, I mean, and I know he'll probably beat you with a pass when you do this, but you got to be screaming, run, run, run. You know, you, it, it, they're going to run a football when that kid has it. Yeah, and you also saw Denham Cook kind of almost acting as his, as the quarterback's fullback after the fake on that play. As drive continues, four and a half minutes with the ball. It bounces up in the air. It's loose on the field. And now we'll have to see who's got it. It looks like it was recovered by Shamar Griffith for Truman, the running back, excuse me, looks like the big offensive lineman, John Saxbury, the left guard, comes up with it. We'll take a look. 
Yeah, I, I, right there, you thought he Griffith had it, but then it gets loose again, and the helmet did come off of uh, the left guard there. But apparently the officials, no, nope, he's got to come off. Yeah, right. he's got to come off for yep. a play. They talked to, you talked about as your key to the game, ball handling, yep. and we saw yep. for the first time there a high snap from the center, Beesmeyer, that Truman is fortunate to maintain, but they now face a second and 15. Well, again, everyone in, in the country at every level seems like runs some version of this shotgun spread, and unfortunately you live and, and die with the bad sometimes, as, as you see it almost every game. There's a bad snap or two. Straight hand off to Griffith up the middle, and the ball comes loose again, and UND recovers this time on the fumble, as that is Cavante Houston comes away with the ball. And we'll take a look here. A big hit in the middle, jarred it loose. Yeah, it was just like, it's hard to see who comes in here. You just like a shot out of a I think that might have been, yeah, it's either Gary Air or Schulte, uh, it looks like Schulte, 28 who knocked it loose, and Cavante Houston comes away with it to stop a very tr promising opening drive for the Bulldogs. Well, we talked about how important it is to get some stops, and obviously that's not exactly what Coach Keevers would draw up. He'd like a three and out, but they'll take it. UND handoff to Toriano Clinton, his first carry in almost a month, and he is tripped up on the perimeter. Might have got back to the original line of scrimmage as we take a look at the UND offense. Christian Clinton, the bat, quarterback Christian Conkling, 911 yards, seven touchdowns. He had four interceptions in his first game against Saginaw, but has cleaned that up as he's gotten back into play. Alonzo Derrick, the leading receiver, 38 re kept receptions for over 500 yards for UND. Conkling will drop straight back against a four-man rush. Throwing it deep down the right sideline, was looking for Clinton who was covered on the play by Ben Thomas, but he couldn't find him. And now Uindy, after the turnover, faces third and 10. Well, I like the route. Again, I like the fact that Conklin showed a lot of poise back there. The, the pocket was starting to collapse. He didn't really uh, panic. He just kind of overthrew that ball there, unfortunate for the Greyhounds, because that would have been a huge game. The Bulldogs go to three down linemen on third and long, bringing in an extra DB. Yeah, they're expecting screen or draw here. Logan Caney in motion, three receivers left now for Conkling. Instead, it'll be a handoff to Clinton, and then he is brought down after a minimal gain. Alex DeBecci. Yeah, that's who I had was DeBecci on the tackle there. There. Only a couple of yards, and now UND is going to have to punt from deep in their own territory, Ryan Zoller. Wind is kind of a west wind, if, if much of anything, so he just needs to unload on it. Yeah, it was throughout much of the pregame. A little bit of wind, snow was still coming down, but it appears to have stopped snowing, and the wind went down, and Zoller just barely gets it away. But then a great punt that goes over the head of Ben Thomas, and this thing is going to keep rolling and rolling down as that is going to be over 60 yards, Zoller's longest punt of the season at a crucial time for the Greyhounds. Yeah, again, almost blocked there, but he was able to get it away. And again, uh, we always coach kids, although that would have been a tough one to fair catch. I do think it would have been possible. You got a fair catch football. Every time uh, years ago, we, we sat down and went over every one of our snaps over the course of a 12 game season. And we, we figured that a punt that hits the ground cost you 15 yards. Uh, so just run up there and catch it. Truman, after the fumble on the opening drive where they had driven inside the UND 15, gets a three and out and gets it back as Hare's pass is knocked down by Guerriere, who came through unblocked to knock it down. So two good plays in a row for Guerriere there. Again, he was in on that uh, knocking the ball loose on the prior, but really nice job. You, normally you teach your defensive lineman that if you can't get there, you realize you're not going to get there, get your hands up, try to block it. Uh, he's coming from his linebacker position. Realized he was not going to get there in time. Uh, to make the tackle. Yeah, and Hare, a little undersized, too. He's only 5'10 at the quarterback position, but as unblocked as Gary or were, not sure a guy 6'10 would have gotten it over the top of him on that play. Yeah, he played at about 6'10 that play. Hand off to Griffith, going behind left guard, and he's not going to get much. Honeyus, one of the linebackers there for UND. 
And now Uindy also kind of will play this three down lineman nickel package where they'll go kind of quicker along the defensive line. Jalen Wilson, number 41 coming in. Quicker defensive lineman and then kind of a, another linebacker with KJ Routabush as Uindy kind of goes to a 3-3-5 three, three, in these long yardage situations. And you go with your quick package here, you're gonna try to put some pressure on the quarterback. But again, watch screens and draws. Um, really on, an offense doesn't have much to lose if they play conservatively here. Yeah, and Uindy will go in three, four, five, or six sometimes out of this package. They rush four, Hare steps up in the pocket and throws over the middle to a wide open man. That's Zach Zerwig on the nice play. Sat down in the zone and he was found by his junior quarterback, Nolan Hare. Well, again, really nice ball here delivered, like you said. Finds a soft spot in the zone, sits down, and you know, maybe the ball's a little wet or whatever, but that's another pass that if it's delivered where he could catch it and run and not have to fall to the ground, that could have been a 20 or 30 yard gain. This is Sutton back in, and Uindy sniffs it out this time and brought down in the backfield for a loss by Honeyus. Aaron Barnett was there as well, but making adjustments the first couple times, Sutton was able to find some room. They figured out what was happening that time and bottled him up in the backfield. Yeah, you said you, Honeyus comes on a blitz here, number 10. You're going to see him right there in your screen and does a nice job of just destroying that block. You know, we tell kids all the time, you're either going to be blocked or, or you're going to, you know, destroy the block one or the other. And... Uh, he definitely was more physical than the running back. A lot of running backs aren't really even interested in blocking. <laughs> they, they, they don't even like to block, and they hate when you call those plays. Hare back in at quarterback now on second and 13. Fake the handoff to Griffith again. He'll throw deep over the middle, looking for his tight end. who might have had a step on Schulte. That was Matt Hall, but he just out of his reach. 99 Michael Dennison there was uh, putting on some pressure. You're going to see it very, very close to a hold here, but yeah, I mean, that to me pretty easily could have been called a hold. Dennison's beating the offensive lineman, and then you see the little bit of a hook. Denham Cook coming on late for Shamar Griffith. Cook, the freshman from Decatur, Illinois, their second leading rusher. A little slow getting the play in here, play clock at seven. They just get the play off. Hare, look over the middle again. This is his other tight end, and he'll bring it down for a first down reception. That's Chris Kerr. And Matt, that's the third time, really, that, that uh, Truman State has had a third and long. We talked about getting stops, getting off the field. So far, UND unable to do that. They did force the fumble, and hats off to that. But uh, again, this is a fantastic third down conversion team. Really nice routes. Uh, that's just good coaching and, and good routes. The kids got to run precise routes. You don't want to have two receivers close enough that one defender can guard them both. And definitely you see that they've kind of attacked down the seam with both tight ends now, something that they've maybe seen on film as an ex something to exploit. Play action again. This will go to Zerwig quick out, and he'll pick up six yards on first down. Yeah, and these tight ends are tight ends in name only. I don't know that they've lined up on either side of the tackle all night long. These are great big old kids. As you look down there, you see number 88, Tate Crane, and he's listed as a wide receiver, but he's 6'3", 205. Uh, every one of these kids could be a tight end. Yeah, Hall, who we've seen a couple times, number 6'3", 225. Kerr, who had the big catch there on third down, 6'3", 230. But you're right, some, a little bit of H back, but yeah, I don't think we've seen them lined up directly next to a tackle on a play yet play action again this is going to be thrown out quickly and caught and brought in just past the sticks that's Zerwig his third catch of the quarter well, those are really hard to defend and I've, I've heard defensive coordinators uh, talk all the time that you know they're just going to kind of give these little three and four yard gains up uh, they, they don't believe most offensive coordinators are patient enough to continue to throw them everyone's like ah they'll have to take it away eventually well what if they don't just keep throwing it until they do Mason Husky is the running back in right now. And he'll come in motion out to the right side and leave an empty backfield. 
Stepping up, he'll throw over the middle again, looking for Zerwig, who brings it in one-handed, and he's gonna be down at the one-yard line. Got past the linebacker, Schulte. Well, just a fantastic catch here, and really, honestly, very good officiating, too. He's down right there. Yeah. And uh, the official down here on the, uh, the head linesman down here at the bottom of the screen is all over it. Great one-handed catch by Zerwig. Junior from St. Louis. 99 Michael Dennison in for UND, the goal line set here. And they leave Husky in at the running back. Hand off to Husky up the middle and he's not gonna get anything. Gary Air brings him down and I think you called it there. Dennison might've been the man underneath them who blew it up from his tackle spot. Yeah, I would agree. Dennison goes low and, and uh, so they kind of go, go high and low on him now again. Every game I ever broadcast, it's it's first and goal at the one. You stay in shotgun, you snap the ball, and immediately it's first and seven. <laughs> I don't like that. I think you got to get under center and let a running back come downhill. Uh, you got a running back that's kind of going laterally as opposed to just giving you know total speed downhill. I don't like it. Denim Cookin is the running back now with Hare remaining as the quarterback. He'll fake it and now roll out to his right. Look at the throw, pass fakes, and gets to the corner. Touchdown, Truman, on the three-yard touchdown run by Nolan Hare. Now, I do like it if you're going to throw the football, and that's what they tried to do. That was actually a design pass, and then there was nothing there, and, and he does a nice job. Of, and I love the ball fake late. Defensive players need to kind of know the rules, and, and, and you know, he can't throw it if he's past the line of scrimmage. Uh, you're going to see the ball fake here about the five. So, uh, that's okay. I mean, he could have still thrown it there, and then after that, it was just over. I like shotgun if you're going to throw it down there. I don't like it if you're going to run it. If you're going to run it, get under center, hand it to a big, strong kid coming downhill from seven or eight yards deep and let him run over somebody. Grant Ross, sophomore from Liberty, Missouri, is on for the extra point. He's 33 of 35 this season. And it is up, and it is good. And Truman strikes first and leads UND 7-0 here on the GLVC and ISC Sports Network. At Aqua Systems, we believe in one simple idea, that it should be easy to get great water. That's why we provide a hassle-free sales process with money-back guarantees and the best warranties anywhere, all on equipment made in the USA. In fact, at Aqua Systems, we make it so easy to fix your home's water that nine out of 10 people who shop with us buy from us. Contact Aqua Systems today You'll love your water. Back in my day, we didn't tailgate. We stood in the rain for three hours watching the grass grow, and we liked it. Go Hounds! Racecom and Buick GMC truck was just awarded GMC Dealer of the Year. Come see why. And drive away in a new GMC Acadia for as little as $2.29 a month. US 31 South. Or I-465 in East Washington Street. Or RaceGilmanCars.com. Three-yard touchdown run by Truman. Quarterback Nolan Hare has the Bulldogs on the board first as Grant Ross will kick off a high short kick that UND will take at about the 23. This is Jaquan Buchanan. And he's going to get a nice return after the short kick for Buchanan and take it up to the UND 47-yard line to start this drive. Today's game is brought to you by Indiana Members Credit Union, proud to support University of Indianapolis Athletics and offers a free UND debit card with a free checking account and e-statement. Get your UND debit card today. Show your school spirit. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online at imcu.com. Membership savings required, federally insured by NCUA. UND went three and out on their first possession after recovering the Truman fumble on their first drive. Hand off to Clinton looking for room inside and just not much to go on Isaiah Estes, the linebacker helping to bottle him up and it's just a gain of one. UND ninth in the country in rushing, averaging 237 yards a game, but Truman only allows 84. Yeah, one of the best things about trying to answer a drive is great field position to start it. UND certainly has that. We'll see if they can capitalize on it. Second and nine. 
fake the handoff if you can. Conklin will throw it outside, looking for Derek, and it is going to be knocked away by Ben Thomas. Well, Thomas just doesn't really go for the ball fake much and just comes downhill and gets there exactly the same time the ball does and uh, does a nice job of not only playing the ball but also giving a little how-do-you-do lick there to the receiver. Four interceptions tied for the lead in the GLVC this year for Thomas, along with now eight pass breakups. Clinton is back in as UND facing another third and long. It was third and ten on the first drive, third and nine here on the second drive. Conklin looking to his left to throw it down the sideline, looking for Derek who brings it in. So he's bobbling it and incomplete along the sideline is the call. He caught it but didn't catch it clean and wasn't able to maintain possession inbounds. We'll take a look. Yeah, I would agree with the call there. Did a nice job of getting the foot down, but just, it was a tough play. I mean, you know, it was, it was one that uh, was not easy at all, and I'm sure he'll tell you he should have caught it, I and mean, that's how kids are. They're competitive, but a tough play he wasn't able to make. Yeah, Conkling put it, put it in the only spot where only his guy could get it, where it was either going to be caught or incomplete. And now Zoller will have to come on, had a huge punt, 50 far yards. His first one lofts it up in the air. It's going to bounce at about the 20 and keep rolling inside the 10, inside the 5, and it's going to be down at about the 4, the punt by Zoller and forcing Truman into poor field position. This afternoon's game is also brought to you by the Free Enterprise System. Proud to be the official transportation provider for Greyhound Athletics. Teamwork makes the dream work. At Free Enterprise, we'd love to be part of your team by providing transportation for your group. We can move groups of any size, event shuttles, youth groups, to campus shuttles, and more. Contact one of our travel consultants at travelfe.com and book with Free Enterprise. Anything else is just a bus ride. Handoff inside again to Griffith, and UND has been strong in that. The straight handoff has not found a lot of room so far for Truman today as Griffith gets bottled up again and actually dropped for a loss of one to make it second and 11. Yeah, it looked like Hunnis and Schulte were both there. Um, not a gambling man here, but I would bet some type of play action pass. <laughs> They've had a lot of success with it, and like you said, the, the actual run is not getting them anywhere. So, again, does not have to be a premium fake. Just kind of wave the ball toward a, the running back's belly and then roll the quarterback out, let him throw. Yeah, three receivers to the right. Matt Hall has said this is going to be a straight run. Is that Sutton who's back in again this time? Step through one tackle and then is brought down by Dennison to get a little bit more breathing room for the Truman offense, but they'll face another third down. Already, we mentioned their success. Truman is four of four on third down today, Jim. And big ones, too. I mean, um, a couple of long ones. Yeah, I mean, that's the key. I mean, this one here, third and seven. Yeah, sometimes the defense will give that up, but UND's given up a couple third and 11s, third and 12s, uh, and just so far, at least. I mean, there's still a lot of football to be played. It's seven to nothing, but so far, it's just been... Uh, not devastating, but certainly not good. Yeah, his favorite target has been Zach Zerwig, number 11, who's lined up in the slot to the right of Hare. And he's looking, uh, looking short again this time, and that is Zerwig, and he is brought down. I think it is going to be short of the first down marker. That's Jalen Wilson who makes the tackle in space. The sophomore went to Brownsburg High School. Yeah, I mean, uh, just a little crossing route, the uh, tight end or slot receiver. Basically cuts across the field right at linebacker depth and just a little short. And that's the end of the quarter. So UND gets the stop on third down. It's 7-0 Truman here on the ISC and GLBC Sports Network. When medical care is needed, where will you turn? With Communities Connect to Care program, one call or click finds you the closest open appointment. Request a time yourself or let us do it. From a primary care doctor or virtual visit, to a med check or community clinic at Walgreens. Just call or click. You can go right to our website or to me. Connect to Care from Community. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. 
Now, add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 1.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Back at Snowy Key Stadium, the University of Indianapolis, number 20, Truman leading UND 7 to nothing. It was all Truman in that opening quarter of play. 123 yards of total offense to just three yards of total offense for the Greyhounds, but UND finally getting their first stop on a fourth down to force a fourth and one, and Taylor Cornish is on to punt, potentially. Here it is, fourth and one. Could be a long count, as you said, Jim, but they do snap it away and get it up. A nice punt, but Alonzo Derrick's gonna have a chance to return this. Gets by one guy and then not able to get past the second as that was Husky who made the nice open field tackle. But again, UND about the same starting field position as the last drive. They'll take over just the other side of the 50-yard line. Today's game brought to you by Aqua Systems, offering water softeners, drinking water systems, water purification, problem water solutions, and bottled water. Visit online at aquasystems.com. Aqua Systems, your home water experts. Well, only seen six plays of offense for UND, Jim, but what have you seen? What does UND maybe need to try to do to get something going here on drive number three as we take a look at the first play? Buchanan in a running back. Conkley will throw on first down, and he is pressured, and he is going to be dropped in the backfield. Ben Miller and Thomas Spaulding there to drop him for the sack. Well, what I started to say was perhaps a short passing game, and UND had four receivers. They did run three of them on short routes. They ran one deep, and uh, unfortunately for Conklin, just – they were all covered, and then he got in a spot where he's like, okay, now what do I do? And it was just too late. Ben Miller, the defensive tackle, and Thomas Spaulding, the defensive end, both there to bring him down, and now looking at second and 20 for UND's total offense, now into the negative. Handoff inside and nothing going on that play either for UND as Ben Miller is there again. Well, they tried the power, pulled the left guard around, and, you know, if I'm the offensive line coach, I'm not pleased with this. You got a bunch of offensive linemen here, and at the end of this play, after our, our running back is just getting absolutely mauled, not one of my guys is on the ground. Not one. And we talk about total effort. Don't, I don't know what that was, but we didn't have anybody on the ground, and it's hard for me to believe that that was total effort. That's the way I coached it. <laughs> I remember one time I was yelling at all 22 of them. There was just a horrible football play. And not one guy, not one, all 22 of them. I, I was yelling at both teams. Another loss on that play, third and 21. Conkling going to throw it out. Jordan in the flat, gets it to Jeremiah Lee, but it was thrown high, and Lee brings it in but couldn't get his feet underneath him to run it upfield, and UND's going to have to punt again. Zoller has been busy and will come back on UND. Starting in, starting about their own 47 the last two drives. Not able to get anything going against this very tough Truman defense. Yeah, Zoller is going to use this little rugby kick where he kind of takes a running start to his right. He gets a little more momentum that way. Uh, but so far this game has been about opportunities. Opportunities that Truman has taken advantage of. And I've missed opportunities for uh, UND. Ben Thomas is going to make the fair catch. And Truman will take over. At their 31-yard line, Nolan Hare, we mentioned him, 9 of 11, 109 yards, one of the top quarterbacks in the country in completion percentages at 82% today, and he has the lone touchdown on a quarterback keeper. And his favorite, Zach Zerwig, his favorite receiver so far, five catches, 58 yards, the wide receiver. They haven't gotten the true running game going much, but again, they've run just enough to keep you in the honest, and then the play auction has worked well for Hare. Straight drop back, throw it out to the left, and that is going to be caught and brought in by Tate Crane. His first catch today, and that's good for 12 yards on first down. Well, there's obviously lots of different ways to run the football, as you're going to see the replay here. Low snap, picked up nicely by Hare. Just delivers a really nice ball, again, to the sideline. So if it does, uh, you know, the only person that can really get it is, is the receiver. But, yeah, you don't have to run the football first. You can flip it. Hare in the game last year was just 7 of 18 for 68 yards and sacked three times. So definitely on his mind to want to have a better performance against Unity, and he has. He's under pressure this time, steps out of a tackle, and he's finally brought down 
Lance got to him first, and then it was finished off by Dylan Shelton. Yeah, again, sometimes you, you talk about who made the play. Uh, there's the play right there, yeah, 96. Lance. Yeah, and uh, and somebody else made the yeah, tackle. Then, yeah, the other defensive tackle. So those two guys in the middle, you see them there, 96 Lance, 92 Shelton combining for the sack on Hare, who looked like he might have had room to take off with it, but was unable to. And now on second and long, Colin Sutton, number one, back in at quarterback. We've seen him in. He has three rushes so far today. Fakes it, and he's going to take it himself again up the middle, and UND swallows it up. He'll fall forward for two yards. But UND has made a little bit of an adjustment after the first two runs where Sutton had some success, the, these past two, not as much. UND's identified it much earlier when he's come into the game. Yeah, you're exactly right. The word is adjustment now, you know, uh, to the point where even I'm starting to notice when he's in the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> From up here, I'm like, that that's not hair. Uh, and if it's not hair, it's a run. So, And those kids down on the field have to notice it. The, the coaches up in the box have to notice it, radio it down to the hit to the coaches on the field. Uh, but so far, that's been very, very predictable on Truman State's part. We mentioned four or five on third down for Truman. Made their first four, missed the last one. UND brings an extra guy. Thrown out to the left, and it is too wide for Zerwig. Incomplete, and UND is going to get the stop and get the ball back as they get off the field again for the second time on third down. Yeah, again, probably going to flip the field here a little bit, but at the, again, at least it's off the field. Alonzo Derrick, the punt returner for UND. He's got a long of 22 this year. He's got a little bit of move, but also is UND's top receiver back there a little bit for his sure handedness. Back, and this is a high punt out to the right. That's going to land. Derrick couldn't get to it. It's going to roll inside the 20 and a nice punt for Truman by their all conference punter. Taylor Cornish. Today's game brought to you by Prairie Farms. What makes Prairie Farms milk and dairy products so tasty? It's very simple. Quality comes first using milk sourced directly from Indiana Farms. You can be sure that every time you purchase Prairie Farms products, you are helping local farm families. Dedicated farmers, happy cows, real milk. That's been the Prairie Farms way for over 80 years. Prairie Farms is Indiana's farmer owned dairy. UND still looking for their First, first down of the game. They have nine plays for negative five yards. This Truman defense has been all it's cracked up to be so far. Hand off to Toriano Clinton going right. And it's going to be a minimal gain on that one as the hole is closed up quickly by the Bulldogs. Estes is there also along with Ulysses Ross. Just a nice job of just playing downhill and going through blocks. And you see a really good tackle there. Yeah, that really was. That was all Estes, the 5'10", 214-pound junior from Fayette, Missouri. McNeilis is the tight end in motion. Conklin, quick throw. This will be Derek out on the perimeter. Quick catch and then knocked down immediately where he caught it. Ben Thomas amongst the players there along with Ben Watson. Uh, I like the quick stuff. You know, the quick stuff, just a little hitch, come off the ball like you're going deep and then just turn around and sit down. And you're going to get four or five if you do it right. And it's really hard to defend. And UND finally in a kind of an unmanageable third down now. Third and two after the first three were all, I think third and nine was the shortest of their previous three third down attempts. UND looking at third and two here. Buchanan in the backfield. Direct handoff to him up the middle. And he is going to fall forward and be good enough to get the first down. Take it. That was Clinton. Excuse me. Eight, not six. And Clinton gets UND its first first down and trying to build a little bit of momentum here in the second quarter in this game. The winner of this game, as we mentioned, will win the Great Lakes Valley Conference Championship and likely a berth in the NCAA Division II playoffs. And yeah, one advantage that, that Truman State has over UND right now is that Conkling does not run the football. He just doesn't run it often. He's not a threat. They don't have to defend it. You can just get that extra defender in the box. Conkling rolling to his right, looking. Flag down. He throws it deep down the sideline in between over the head of Lee and short for Derek. 
And we also see our first flag of the day come down in the backfield in what appears to be the area of Holden. Yeah, and the, the head referee, the white hat, as he is often referred to, is explaining uh, the situation to the offensive lineman there, number 76. That's uh, Ryan Ritchie. And he's just telling him what he did. You know, I mean, there, there's lots of different ways you can hold. You can grab jersey. You can wrap around. Uh, and right there you see that he's grabbing his jersey. He's outside the frame, and he's got a handful of cloth. If the defender is inside the frame, your frame, then, yeah, you, you grab a little bit. <laughs> no one's going to say anything about that. But when he gets outside of your frame, you have to roll your hands. I used to teach our kids, you know, once you start to lose him, roll your hands, open your hands, show the official your fingers. I'm pushing, but I'm not holding. First and 20 now after the penalty. Lenny Bennett in it running back for the first time for the Hounds. We're going to do a jet sweep. Jeremiah Lee getting out on the perimeter, and he just got up ended, kind of hip-checked unintentionally by Ben Thomas. Gets back about seven yards of the penalty. UND trying to use a little bit of their speed on the outside on that play. Yeah, Lenny Bennett, number 31, had a nice block out here on the perimeter, and that's so important. Uh, if you're going to run jet sweeps and things like that, you've got to block spot screens. Uh, a lot of times you see somebody throw the football out there, nobody blocks, two-yard loss. Conklin's got Buchanan in the backfield with him this time. Throws underneath to Derek, and he is immediately wrapped up by Ulysses Ross for a short gain and maybe only one. He had to get rid of it quick as Ben Watson, one of the free safeties, came unblocked off the right side. Yeah, and I think Watson was responsible basically for checking uh, Buchanan, and he did not check him at all, and if Conklin would have seen that, he could have gotten the ball to Buchanan, and he Probably would have ran to Greenwood. <laughs> <laughs> they converted a third and short, but UND, what has unfortunately been the issue on offense so far here in the first half, it's third and long, third and 11. Conkley fakes the handoff, but pressure comes, and he is brought down on the play. Ulysses Ross came unchecked past the right tackle, Ryan Ritchie to bring down Conkling's second sack of the day for the Bulldogs. Well, again, you just see him do a nice job. We, we, we call that uh, you know, a rip move where you're going to rip the back arm and get your shoulder pad past his midpoint. If you can get your shoulder pad past his midpoint, now just keep working, keep working, keep working. Come out underneath and big play for him. Zoller on for this fourth punt of the day, averaging just over 43 yards per punt, but this one is going to be returnable for Ben Thomas. But he is wrapped up pretty quickly and brought down. Good coverage, UND special teams by Sam Flowers, the backup linebacker from Hazelcrest, Illinois. Yeah, Flowers was right there, and again, really good form tackle. We tell kids sit to hit, and uh, don't stop your feet. I mean, run your feet, but sit to hit, and that's what he did. And uh, I don't think that was going anywhere, anywhere either, because. Uh, there was another defender there. I think uh, Crawford was also there. So good coverage, unfortunately, just happened at midfield. Very good starting field position now for Truman, looking to extend their 7 nothing lead. The defense has held Uindy in check. Uindy, after kind of allowing a lot of yards on the opening two drives, showed up a little bit. Hare. Not able to find his first receiver, then try to go over the middle, and that's Dylan Shelton again, who's been very active in this first half, the defensive tackle out of Frankfurt, Illinois. Well, and again, he's looking, Harris looking for number 11 the whole time. Zach Zerwick, UND, does a better job of covering him. Obviously, you don't have to be real smart to realize they like to go to that kid, and that forces this bad kind of sidearm pass. Nice job there, knocking it down by Shelton. And... Uh, you hope in those situations that he bats it up and, yeah. and one of his teammates can uh, can come up with it, but uh, unable to do that that particular time. Yeah, Hare was trying to drop it off to the running back, Griffith, who had leaked out after initially blocking. Straight hand off to Griffith this time, and he is immediately swung down to the backfield by Kyle Borski for a loss, and it will bring up third and long. So defensively, you know, if I'm one of the UND defensive coaches, there's two people I have to know who, where they are. Uh, one is the backup quarterback. If he comes into the football game, everybody in the building has to know he's in the game. And number 11, Zerwick. I mean, uh, regardless of where he lines up, whether he's on the inside slot of a trips or on the wide set, 
uh, everybody on that defense know, needs to know where he's at. Yeah, he was only their third leading receiver coming into the game, but was really bunched up across the two starting wide receivers, the two starting tight ends, all of them with between 22 and 33 catches. So Harris spreads it around between those four guys, but Zerwig, to your point, has been his guy today. Straight back pressure, gets by to Routabush, throws over the middle and it is gonna be knocked away. He was looking for Hall, but that was Brandon Thomas, the cornerback who knocks it away. The initial pressure by Routabush, and then Thomas breaks it up. And I thought, honestly, there was an opportunity there for, I mean, I, I really thought the ball might be picked by 41 Jalen Wilson, and the ball just got over him. And there was basically three great plays right there, potentially, as you see the pressure here. And then again, right there. And yeah, just, just over uh, Wilson's head there. So here's your shot, fellas. Five minutes and 37 seconds to play in the half. We've been doing this three, three and out and flipping the field. About time to get something going offensively. Cornish with the punt. It's going to bounce. Derek tries to take it off the bounce. And then it bounces down on an opportunity for Truman, but he was unable to recover. It was DJ Flint, and Derek gets away with one there for UND to maintain possession after he tried to field it off the bounce. Well, again, when you, you coach those kids that if you get a good high bounce, take it, because yeah. if you don't, it's going to roll all the way to the two. Uh, so I'm not mad at the kid for doing what I told him to do. I would, would have liked him to do it a little better. Yeah, get a great look at it here. There's the There's bounce. There's the bounce. Take that bounce. And then almost just didn't bounce high enough for DJ Flint. Yeah, I think he took his eyes off of it just a little bit too. Uh, we always told kids you catch a football with your eyes, not your hands. Catch it with your eyes. Watch it into your hand. Straight handoff up the middle for Clinton. And just not a lot of room. This Robert Greco and Ben Miller, the defensive tackles for Truman, have kind of bottled up and allowed their linebackers to get to Clinton. There have not been very many holes nope. for Nine. UND's all-time leading rusher. You see 90 there rolling. He's doing a nice job of just standing people up. Yeah, they're rotating guys. Again, these teams just kind of mirror images of each other. Both use a good rotation of defensive linemen so that nobody gets you know, particularly tired. Everybody's normally fresh. And putting the pressure on Conkling to get something going. Quick throw out into the flat to McNeilis. And then the ball, they're gonna say it's incomplete. Broken up by Ben Thomas. As he submarined McNeilis, the ball came loose, but the official immediately ruled it incomplete. The officials are gonna get together here. They're gonna talk about it. This is, that'd be, I mean, he blew his whistle and did it. It'd be hard to change. Yeah, I, yeah. I would agree with you. I don't think you can change it as emphatically as he changed it. We're going to get a good look here. And Manilis is still kind of limping as he comes off the field. Just a, I think he may have, uh, I don't know, did that ball hit the ground? I, I, think, I, think it was in, I think it was incomplete via the fact that the ball hit the ground. Okay, we'll see. Did it bounce off his body? Watch. I think it hits the ground, then hits his body. Officials are... Still kind of discussing it, but I'm like you. Uh, I think once you blow it dead, I mean, what are you going to do? I guess you could yeah, and, and award the football and, to Truman's you know, spot. And in the GLVC, there is no replay. Okay. So McNeil is slipping off. We'll take his opportunity to take a quick timeout here on the GLVC and ISC Sports Network. Back in my day, we didn't have inflatables for the kids. They played with sticks and stones, and they liked it. Portillo's is unbelievably excited to serve their famous Chicago-style street food in Indianapolis on US 31, just south of Stop 11 Road. We are looking for top dogs to get paid daily, have a flexible work schedule, and we'll get free shift meals. Apply at portillos.com slash careers. Kevin McNeilis, the senior tight end from Chittard, able to get off the field under his own power, and again, another third and long for the Hounds. Trying to find something that works against this outstanding Truman defense. Conkling against a three-man rush. He'll throw underneath to Jeremiah Lee. Ball comes out again. Knocked loose. It's rolling around. And this time they are going to call it a fumble. And Truman is going to recover inside the UND 5. Picked up by Ulysses Ross. Yeah, and now Lee is still down as well. And he absolutely got trucked. Uh, no shame in this. You're going to see this hit here he catches the ball takes a step or two and again from here we couldn't really tell if he controlled the football in his hands or if that ball was being bobbled when he got hit 
Um, but the official was right there. I mean, he was standing eight feet from it. Credit the force fumble to Landon Donaldson, sophomore out of Kansas City, Missouri, and then Ulysses Ross, the man on the play to give it first and goal from the three. Now for Truman. So they forced you, Indy, into a lot of third and longs and then played a deep coverage, forcing people to throw it underneath, and then they have been able to step up and make the tackles as needed. Nolan Hare with Griffith. He's going to lob it out to the left side, and nothing doing. Broke it up on the play by UND. Jalen Given. Gavon breaks up and is looking for Noah Copeland. Had a lot of field that way out to the field side, but not able to get it high enough to get it to Copeland. Copeland only three catches all year. Was looking for his first touchdown reception. Well, UND with, again, a little bit more of their goal line package, and it looks now like they have added an extra DB. And Sutton in the game now at quarterback. The rusher of the two quarterbacks. Fakes it, he gets up in there, and Honeyus is immediately in the backfield to slow him down, and then the rest of the Hounds get there to drop Sutton for a loss back to the seven. Yeah, Honeyus again just comes on a blitz. That, that, that's the adjustment. You know what, if one catches the snap, ten's coming. It's as simple as that, and he just ties him up. And might have been Denham Cook's responsibility, the running back that he faked the handoff by, but Honeyus went by, and now another player down on the field for Truman. And I think that is, I think that's Sutton. Might have got hit again. It is cold as sub 30 degrees, as obviously evidenced by the snow out on the field. And he got hit by a lot of guys, Honeyus and the rest of them there. So it'll be third down coming up. The Gordon Flesh Business Technology Managed. Please visit at gflesh.com. And Sutton is back up. He's going to hobble off here. And hobbling in, in, in a way, Matt, that now they're actually Yeah, hobbling, gonna, yeah, he's not. He's they're, they're, I thought they were going to carry him off. Uh, that kind of indicates he's probably not going to come back. I mean, every now and then you'll see a kid. They'll lay there for a minute. It's kind of like stubbing your toe. It hurts, and, and then it kind of dissipates, and the kid will get off under his own power. But that does not look necessarily uh, like he's going to come back. We'll see. I mean, kids have different levels of toughness. Uh, at some point, they could walk him to the locker room. Get him warmed up a little bit, he may feel better. This would be a huge, huge goal line stand for the uh, Greyhound defense if they can get this play right here. Third and goal from the six. Hounds bring a blitz. It's picked up. Hare is going to roll out to his right, looking, trying to get to the corner. He dives. Touchdown, Truman. Nolan Hare rushes for his second. Touchdown of the day. He had two rushing touchdowns this season. He has two today, and Truman increases their lead to 13. Well, slim, similar but different to the other touchdown. This time there's two linebackers blitz, and he realizes it immediately. Number 30 picks up the first one, and then he's like, you know what, I got one shot here, and that's to get to the, the pylon, and he does. Uh, that block was by Denim Cook for Truman. Just got past the grasp of Kiave Guerrier, who couldn't get out to him in a race towards the pylon. And now you, Wendy, really behind it as the extra point is up and down. 14 to nothing as Truman gets the fumble. They get the fumble recovery, and they take advantage of the turnover. 14 nothing. the number 20 Bulldogs lead the Greyhounds on the ISC and GLBC Sports Network. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about Chip. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Short drive for Truman as they convert after the turnover. And this has been all Truman in the first half. Time of possession, 
Had it for over 16 and a half minutes to just nine for UIndy. And again, we talked about total yards. Truman has run 32 plays for 142 yards. UIndy has run 18 plays for negative one yards. Very impressive defensively by Truman State. Ball chipped up in the air. It's going to be caught on the fly by Buchanan and not able to get much more after that, but it's still going to be pretty decent field position. A couple of drives now. UND certainly has had some opportunities. What have you seen, maybe things, maybe that UND can do here? Maybe this is their last drive of the half that they can do to try and get a little momentum. UND did, will get the second half kickoff, so certainly an opportunity if they can go down here and score and they will get the ball to start the second half as well. Yeah, it would be an excellent double up if they can get it. Again, I, I've said earlier just the, the, sh the short, quick passes, and they've completed them. Unfortunately, then they, they drop them once they get hit, and that's obviously. But I still think you got to do something. you gotta, you got to get this defense running sideways. All right? They can't be running downhill. Handoff to Clinton. It's going, and he is going to get brought down in the backfield. Garrett Lynn gets there as, again, just has not been much running room for Clinton, or that was Buchanan that time, or Buchanan. And just in terms of game going, UND just also hasn't had a lot of success on first down. Right, and, and again, when I talk about running sideways, I mean things like counters. Uh, you may want to think about some kind of inside res reverse or something, but you know, play action, things where the defense can't just come downhill and, and play. They, you got to get them to, to play and, and defend 53 yards. Ethan Hand is the tight end as Clinton is back in. Fake the handoff. Conklin, slow roll out to his left, and it is going to be knocked away on the play. It was the man underneath who got a hand on it. Peyton Carr, the strong safety. You see him there, 17, who got his hand on it to break it up before it got to the receiver out on the perimeter. Well, and again, I like the play. I, you know, it, it's a play action kind of fake right, throw left kind of thing, get the defense playing the other way. Again, I think that ball was tipped, like you said, by 17, so therefore no pass interference because the defender, the second defender got there a little early. Third and nine again for the Hounds. And now we get a flag coming down, and it's going to be third and 14. Yeah, false start out there on the perimeter. Man, that's stuff that coaches just... I just wide receiver Jeremiah Lee. Yeah, you know, you just say, for, for Pete's sakes, fellow, that's why I have gray hair or no hair at all. <laughs> And UND, a team that you know, doesn't get penalized a yeah. lot, about 70 yards per game, but they're also facing a team. Truman is playing well as they had. They're one of the least penalized teams in the country. Truman is fourth in the NCAA, only being called for four penalties per game, and they've been called for none today. UND, two for 15 yards. Conkling looking, going to throw over the middle. He's got a man wide open. Big gain for UND. Frank Bentley with the reception, and UND finally finds something converting on third and 14. Well, just got barely enough time to get the ball off, and then a nice ball delivered in the pocket of Bentley, and then Bentley absolutely fought for extra yardage. Honestly, got a couple more than that. They had already blown it dead because of forward motion or forward momentum. But you see that right there, and I, right here, you just wanted to hold on to it. That's Covered right. up. Conklin had some time to throw that time and put it on the money over the middle to Bentley, the, the junior from Louisville. Handoff and a little more room this time, and now we're going to have a rugby scrum trying to get a few more yards. That's Toriano Clinton on the carry before he's wrapped up. And there is the aforementioned 22 guys on the field and not one of them on the ground play. Uh, now, again, but they went motion left, so they gave the defense something to think about. Motion left, came back right. You've got to get the defense to play sideways. You can't let them play downhill. Now, if you're really good, you can. Just maul them, just run right over them. Conkling, back to pass again. He's going to throw over the middle. High, Derek had it in his hands, but then it's knocked away by Ben Thomas. And again, excellent ball skills you can see. His second pass breakup tonight. He had 27 in his career coming in. And you saw it there. High pass. And Thomas knocks it away. Yeah, just a little bit behind him here a little bit as yeah, well. If he leads him, he, he catches that ball and probably gets tackled. I mean, but at least it's going to be a first down. So, uh, But the ball thrown just a little bit behind him. And that's what allowed Thomas to get a big old mitt on that. I mean, play. it might depend on third down here. 
You think four down territory here if you're UND? I think so. I think, again, I probably try a long count uh, before I do that. I got my timeout, so I would, if, if we have to take one, we take one. Conklin's got time. Looking, looking. He's going to loft it deep over the middle of the field into the end zone. And it is dropped by Caney. Sliding along the back, and Logan Caney couldn't bring it in. Well, we talked earlier, Matt, about missed opportunities. Yet another missed opportunity for uh, for the, the Greyhounds. And again, Truman State has seemed to capitalize on there. Now, to answer your earlier question, fourth and seven, I, I don't go for it here. I was thinking maybe if they got three or four yards as you watch the replay here. In his hands, and he just, as he hit the, the icy ground of the end zone, couldn't bring it in for the completion. And Zoller a punt and try and pin Truman deep. End over end punt. Going to bounce, and then falling on it is Thomas at the 13-yard line, a minute 38 remaining until halftime. So you mentioned timeouts. UND had all three. Truman has all three timeouts as well. Stay with us for our Ray Skillman Auto Group halftime show. We'll be joined by UND men's basketball coach Paul Corsaro and swimming and diving head coach Brent Noble during the halftime show. So stick with us for that along with stats and highlights from the first half of action. Oh, and somebody's play chart, I think, just flew down from upstairs. <laughs> Gary Air comes on a blitz. They hand it up inside to Denham Cook and UND drops him at the line of scrimmage. Honey, that's there too. He's had a really nice game so far defensively. I mean, UND has not played poorly on defense. They just, you know, you give up a touchdown on a what? Four yard drive on that uh, fumble. Uh, other than that, although it has been all Truman State statistically and, and plays and, and time of possession, hats off to the Gray on defense. They, they really haven't broken but once. I, I don't count that one down there. That's tough. You know, I mean, yeah, you want your kids to, to hold them, and I get all that. But that's an impossible position to put a defense in. Yeah, one drop. The opening drive was long. They got the fumble. Shorter drive on the second. Handoff again to Griffith. And Michael Brown is going to bring him down. That's his seventh tackle. And Uindy, I think, is going to. Yeah, that's Chris Kievers. He's going to call the timeout with 49 seconds left. So this is a Uindy timeout with Truman facing third and eight to potentially, if you get a stop on third down, try and get the ball back, playing the clock and field position, UND uses its first timeout. Yeah, and I don't know that uh, Coach Keevers was trying to get the attention of the head linesman who was not hearing him. Uh, the wing official on this side did see it, uh, but Coach Keevers was calling that thing about three or four seconds before they actually granted it. And again, I don't know that four seconds is going to make much difference. But if I'm Coach Keevers, I, I ask for my four seconds. I mean, I just do. I'm like, hey, you, you know, I, I look at the yeah. official that, that saw me, and you saw me. Go over and tell your boy there that, uh, you know, we need four or five seconds. And, you know, of course, I ask for eight. You know, That's I right. Him, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Got like eight That's seconds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, they give and me maybe four. you get four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Third and nine for Truman. If you're Greg Nesbitt and offensive coordinator Jason Kilday, do you, do you take a chance here or do what you've done on the first two, make you Indy burn a timeout and just take your chances that you can? That's exactly what I do. I keep the ball on the ground. I, do, I don't, do not throw it. Um, you know, you can run quarterback draw. Let's see. Is, uh, yeah, it's still hair. Okay. Yeah, you know, trying he, to, trying he to could look. probably run a little bit too. I mean, uh, he's probably not, again, the guy you necessarily want to run. Uh, but you could run yeah, fake or yeah, keeper or something yeah, yeah, a little yeah. off balance. Cook is back in as the running back, and he's going to get the straight handoff up the middle and get a couple of yards brought down by the Hounds and an immediate timeout by UND to force a punt by Taylor Cornish. I like to play, though. It's basically a counter. They pull a guard and an H back. They're going to pull a, a guard from right to left, kick out the defensive end outside linebacker, and uh, bring that H back up underneath. Uh, it just wasn't there. Good job of, de of, of defending it by uh, UND. Cornish has punted twice today, the all-conference Punter for Truman, 6'4", 206, the senior from West Plains, Missouri. It looks like uh, UND may put two returners back. They've had Caney kind of 15 yards in front of Derek yeah. all right. night. And they're also long discussion with the front guys. Is this a talking about maybe trying to get it? Yeah. Or whatever you do, 
don't run into them. Right. No, and that's, that's it, too. Uh, you're, you're reminding them that, hey, listen, if we do go after it, you want to go for a spot about two yards in front of the punter uh, and, then, and then dive sideways. Don't dive at him. Dive, you know, uh, you know parallel uh, to the goal line and try to block the thing. But you could see maybe a reverse or something back here on the back end. Cornish is lined up at about the three. He comes, and a booming kick that's going to force Derek all the way back, but now he's got some room to maybe do something with it. Looking to his right, and just not much there is a really good play by Thomas. So we've called his number starting at these, his corner position and also playing special teams, and he's also the punt returner for Truman, makes a good open field tackle, and after that excellent punt, by Cornish pushes U and D back. They were probably maybe hoping to get it much closer to yep, midfield. Instead, they're going to start at the 36, 64 yep. yards from Pater. And you know that that play right there is, is kind of a, a you know a capsule of how the whole first half has gone because that looked like it was there for just a second. It looked like it was setting up, and then a, a really good player in Thomas comes over and blows it up. Yeah, or that in the elements you. All the things that could go wrong on that play and executed excellently by Truman. Just a three-man rush. They drop eight. Conkling, a lot of time. Greco gets by, but he gets out of the grass, thrown towards the sideline. And a six-yard gain for Derek, but more importantly, also the amount of time that comes off the clock down to 23 seconds here in the opening half. Well, you know, and, and Conklin kept the play alive, which is what your quarterback, what you want your quarterback to do. The wide receiver wisely got out of bounds. I've seen kids fight like heck to get that extra yard and stay in bounds. And those, again, those are things that cause coaches to have gray hair. Conkling again. Fourth guy comes. This thrown down the right sideline and nearly intercepted on the play. It was looking for Caning, but Ryan Olivas, who was also tied for the GLVC lead in interceptions, got there to knock it away. Hung up in the air, maybe just a little too long to get it to Caney. That was a long throw all the way across the field. That's exactly right. I mean, he's all over the left hash, as you see there, and you'd like to see the receiver maybe come back to the ball a little bit sooner than he did. Uh, that's a long throw for anybody. Truman might get a timeout of their own here if UND can't convert on third down. Conkling will throw over the middle. He's got a man, Derek, at the 40, and immediately brought down at the 39. UND an opportunity here nine seconds and you indy will call timeout and use their final timeout of the half instead of trying to spike it yeah i don't think there's any way they could have got up here and done it in nine seconds it was just too too long of a play this is one of those deals where you know you indy just have one of them days they get a great big play well it's too far now we can't run down here and spike it so we got to use our last timeout. sometimes you can't get out of your own way uh every time you indy does something good it somehow comes back to bite them Colin Seymour, the field goal kicker for UND. His long this year is 39. So you're looking to get it to about the 22-yard the line would be in that range. Although he did have a 54-yarder in high school. And I've seen him a few times on longer ones. He hasn't made him, but you've seen the leg. So if you're playing for field goal or maybe one, so one play to set up a field goal or one play into the end zone here probably your options. Yeah, and again, you know, you got to get out of bounds because you don't have any timeouts, right. and I don't think you'll be able to get up there and spike it. So, of course, Truman State knows this, and they will defend everything on the sidelines. They'll give you the middle. What do you want, 20-yard gain? There you go, take it, right? Uh, so, you know, it's just a chess game uh, that, that is football between coaching staffs, and then you got to get your kids to understand that game and, and execute. Three receivers to the left of Conkling. Truman will bring five. Conkling deep down the right sideline looking for Bentley and just over his head Ben Thomas on the coverage so you and he took a shot at it and now they'll get one more play with three seconds to go in the first half yeah and that's the play I mean that's a really nice route and a really nice design uh, to get Bentley down there I mean if he catches that maybe he does get to the pylon if he doesn't he gets knocked out of bounds at the one mm -hmm. you know, bonus bonus Likely the last play of the half here with three seconds remaining. Truman sends just three this time. Conkling's got to step up in the pocket, throws it into the end zone, and it is knocked away it's briefly in the hands of Rory Heltsley, but not able to bring it in. And Truman, just at 
excellent half of football for the Bulldogs in this game to decide the Great Lakes Valley Conference Championship. After 30 minutes of play, the Bulldogs, 14, UND, zero. Stick with us, we'll be back here in a moment with the Ray Skillman Auto Group Halftime Show on the ISC and GLVC Sports Network. Back in my day, it was about family here at the University of Indianapolis. And you know what? It still is. Go Hounds! Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Now get financing as low as 3.49% APR on a new or used vehicle. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Back in my day, the entertainment at the football games was Uncle Larry playing his banjo in the back of the van. Welcome back to Key Stadium at the University of Indianapolis. Number 20, Truman State leads UIndy 14 to nothing. This is the Ray Skillman Auto Group halftime show, and we're joined now by the head coach of the University of Indianapolis men's basketball team, Paul Corsaro, coming off an opening night win last night at Nickerson Hall, 81 to 39 over Ohio Dominican. Paul, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Big win last night. We'll talk a little bit about your team, but just last night, opening game of the season. I don't believe you played any exhibition, so what did you like to see from your team opening night? Obviously, great defense, held them to 39 points, but tell us a little bit about last night's game yeah. and what you like to see. It was nice. I mean, usually we have some exhibitions prior to the regular season to kind of get a gauge of where we're at. Uh, our exhibition this year is actually this Tuesday against Western Kentucky, and what's going to be a regular season game for them, but an exhibition for yep. us. We have had some scrimmages, so you kind of have an idea of where you're at, but it was our first time competing against somebody else with fans in the stands, lights on, so there's a little bit of unknown there. And you know what? Our guys really played hard for 40 minutes, and uh, the defense speaks for itself. You guys were picked as the preseason favorite in the Great Lakes Valley Conference after you made that run to the Great Lakes Valley Conference tournament championship game a season ago. I don't know, you saw that? Is that something you expected to see? Is that kind of what you guys maybe felt internally, that that's a position that you thought you should be in? You know, I, I don't I don't like to project or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm always telling our guys, like, hey, focus one day at a time. You know, uh, last night we were, we, were, we were pretty good against Ohio Dominican. Well, today we had to be the best practice team in the country, and tomorrow <laughs> we're going to be hopefully be really good against uh, Lake Erie. So one day at a time, you know, I think um, we have good talent. Um, people respect what we did at the end of the year last year. You know, we made some school history in terms of first team ever to make the GLVC championship game, first staff to get 19 wins in their first, you know, two seasons. And, and you know, actually, it's the first team to ever be picked uh, preseason number one. We love doing first. That's pretty cool. First team to hold someone under 40 points in 77 years in a home opener last night. So that's all great. But you know what? It doesn't matter because tomorrow's a new day and you got to go do something again. You just got to keep proving it and keep working and keep getting better. You mentioned some of those you know, returning players, Jesse Bingham, Kendrick Shoa, both recognized recently the Indianapolis Star as some of the top college players returning here uh, in the Indianapolis area. You're talking about those returners and those guys. Jesse Kidder, certainly not alone. You've got a good core yeah. of returners. What you're expecting out of that group this year? Yeah, that's special. You know, the, the Kendrick and Jesse, you know, when I got this job, it was April 17th, 2020, in the heart of COVID. And um, we returned. 14 points of 81 points a game and no staff, six players. Like, it, it was like starting from scratch. You know, Jesse and Kendrick, Kendrick played sparingly, averaged like about two points a game. He was two of those 14 points. Jesse redshirted. Like, we just kind of built a program again back up from scratch at that point. And those guys, those two especially, and Ben Nickerson too, one of those guys, three of those guys, they just said, hey, we're all in. And, they, and we kind of started from scratch again. And those are three of our starters last night, and they played well. And it's kind of cool to see their hard work, their dedication, their loyalty to the program and the school pay off. Well, and that 
one of these things that you see in college basketball now sometimes a little bit at places is a lack of continuity and you have some of that you know those guys that starting group has played together mm -hmm. how much does that help you, know, you obviously work your newcomers in but you do have a bit of continuity and guys that have been in the program for a yeah year. yeah i think you know the, the name of the game is retainment you know get old stay old you know and and you're going to win with experience and and trust and uh, i really trust our roster you know they're like I, i'm looking out there i'm like oh like in the, you know, they pulled within two or three last night, and I'm thinking, like, we're fine. I've won with these guys before. You know, they know what to do, and I think that's big. Obviously, some newcomers as well. Tell us a little bit, you know, some of these new faces that fans, if they didn't get out there last night for Ohio Dominican, you know, for tomorrow and throughout the season, that some of these new faces that they'll see in the program this year. Yeah, there's some great compliments to, you know, what we return. We always talk about, you know, our returners and, you know, how there's a lot of talent there, but, you know, Bruno Williams, all league guy from uh, Lewis two years in a row. You know, so how we said we got better, Lewis got worse. Good for us. <laughs> and, and, hey, it's okay to joke about that, but it's the truth. You know, David Eja, uh, NAIA All American, NAIA All American here. You know, and Jarvis Walker, Division One, Purdue Fort Wayne. I recruited them to Fort Wayne. He signed, and then I took the UND job. I, and I told Jarvis when we recruited him, I was like, hey, man, like, I always wanted to coach you. Maybe we just knew maybe UND was the right place. You know, that was kind of my pitch. Like, maybe maybe this it wasn't meant to be there. Maybe it's supposed to be here. And he balled out last night. And, uh, you know, Sean Craig from uh, uh, from Toledo, Ohio, you know, he, he had a great game uh, for his first college game. So we have some really, really good newcomers to go along with some great returns. It's a great group. My biggest struggle is, as a coach, man, I want to play everybody. I want to play everybody, and you know, figuring out rotations is a lot. And at the end of the day, I just tell everybody, you know, we win, everybody eats, and that's that's got to be our mentality. Yeah, good problem to have. Long season, things can happen, but you got to see a lot of different places. Uh, obviously, an opportunity for people to see you three o'clock tomorrow. Uh, what does Lake Erie bring up, and you know, what can fans see if they get out to Nickerson Hall tomorrow? La Lake Erie's a, a tough team. Like they got physical toughness, mental toughness. They play really hard. Um, you know, they. They had they had a they had a 500 record last year, so I mean, I, and I say that with with respect because if, if you have a winning record, 500 or above in Division Two, it means you're a good ball club, you know. And, and they're going to come out here and they're going to scrap and they're going to be tough. They're going to play hard, and they and they can hit shots from three. So we need to defend the arc and, and and be ready to defend and rebound. And if we defend and rebound, I think we'll be in good shape. But you know, I think uh, you know for for comparison's sake, we're going to have a bigger challenge tomorrow than we had on Friday. Well, congratulations on the season opening win. Good luck tomorrow, and appreciate you taking the time to, to come out here in the cold and join us this afternoon. Absolutely. Go Hounds. I was Hounds. saying, you obviously, football background as well. Uh, I know you want to see these guys uh, football get, you know, did you did you like playing in the snow? Uh, you know, I, I was too soft for that. That's why I went to an indoor sport. But I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 we need some more wildcat offense out there, Matt. That's what we need. That, but that, <laughs> that was your that was your go to. That was your go to. Right, man. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. See you, man. Bye. Paul Cursaro, men's basketball coach for the Greyhounds. We'll take a timeout and come back. The head coach of the UND men's and women's swimming and diving programs, Brent Noble, coming up next here on the halftime show on the ISC and GLVC Sports Network. Buick GMC truck was just awarded GMC Dealer of the Year. Come see why. And drive away in a new Buick Encore for just $129 a month. Lease a new GMC Terrain for only $229 a month. Or get a third row Acadia for as little as $229 a month. Get your next SUV from the GMC Dealer of the Year, Ray Skillman Buick GMC truck. Two great locations, US 31 South. Or I-465 and East Washington Street. Or RaySkillmanCars.com. This global pandemic has challenged us all. No one is immune to the profound effect that it has had on our lives and our livelihoods. This pandemic has brought many things into a clearer focus. We thrive best when in community. We treasure our freedom. We have much more that we want to see and do. There's still so much more left to experience together. At Free Enterprise, when challenges come, we meet them with new resolve and our standard cleaning and sanitary practices, we've implemented extra precautionary measures, including a new monofoil electrostatic spraying system. 
This same system is used in hospitals and by legacy brands like Disney. Rest assured that at Free Enterprise, we always take great pride in going above and beyond to provide you and your group with the best care and service possible. We're excited to get our wheels turning and your group moving. Reach out to our Free Enterprise team and book your group's charter today. Travel Free Enterprise, because anything else is just a bus ride. Back here at halftime from Key Stadium, the Ray Skillman Auto Group halftime show as we're now joined by the head coach of the swimming and diving programs here at the University of Indianapolis, Brent Noble. Brent, thanks for taking the time to come out here this afternoon. Great year a season ago for both your team, the women second in the country at the NCAAs, men third in the country at the NCAAs. How have you guys kind of propelled a little bit about that, but that's last year, this is this year. This year, the men first in the preseason poll, women fourth. You've had some meets. How's the season gone kind of to this point so far for both the men and the women? Thanks, Matt. Uh, really just trying to stay the course. Um, you know, the goal is going to be trying to help each swimmer and diver reach their potential. And if we can do that, I think we can probably end up uh, enjoying the result. Uh, so we've spent the first three months of the season training or two months training, trying to prepare. And then we're... We're resting now, um, trying to put up some good performances this coming weekend, uh, which should be a, a high point for the fall semester and, and go from there. So trying to just manage each individual and, and help them be the best they're able to. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that event that you've got coming up here. So it's the House of Champs Invitational. Uh, it's been held for the past 20 years or so. I used to swim in it as an athlete <laughs> years ago. Um, so IEPUI has one of the best facilities in the country. Uh, the IU Natatorium, which is actually going to be our Nationals facility for this year. So we have the opportunity to prepare in the pool that we're going to race in at Nationals. Uh, and so it's a three-day meet, prelims and finals. Uh, we're going to shave down, put suits on, give some rest. So in swimming, you really only swim really fast two or three times a year, um, or most of the time you, you focus on those few meets. So this is one of them for us. So we, we put everything into it. Um, peak our training a little bit so we can try to put up some fast times for the year, hopefully some lifetime bests, um, but ultimately trying to put up some national qualifying times so we have those under our belt yep. so we can just wait it out and then be ready in March. What is kind of the, obviously it's, the bid is set kind of years in advance, but obviously the opportunity to host the Division II National Championships this year, UND is the, the host institution for that, to have an opportunity you know, and coming off the excellent season you had last year, you know, as you've kind of prepared preseason now into the season, kind of the, the messaging of the team and that opportunity to take, you know, an excellent team and have the opportunity to compete for a national championship, you know, here in Indianapolis. And, and what you've been telling, you know, the swimmers and the divers this year about that opportunity. Yeah, it's special. I mean, we try to keep, take it all in stride. And again, you know, each step is, can you be the best you're able to do? Be, are you doing your part? Um, but we know deep down that we have an opportunity to do something pretty special at the end of this year. And so having our team all there, all in our hometown, uh, all in a pool we're really used to. You know, we, we compete there two or three times a year at least, uh, plus some club meets and some things through the year. So it's a facility that we are really familiar with. Um, so it, it definitely is different. It's definitely special. But we're, uh, again, one step at a time. We'll get there. Four individual event national championships amongst 94 All-American performances last year. Who are kind of maybe some of the key people on both kind of the men's and the women's side that you're looking at and names that Greyhound fans should know and maybe look out for that could be kind of that maybe you're eyeing and targeting that contention who could maybe uh, help and maybe bring home individual national championships for the Hounds in March? Sure. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think first, really, our hallmark lately has been our being well-rounded and depth. Um, I think it's it's more about what we have in every event mm -hmm. rather than this, the, the peaks. There are just no valleys. Um, but Cedric Boosing has, has been super strong. Uh, he keeps getting better. He, he's still young. He just turned 19. Oh, wow. Um, he was the junior European champion in the summer of 21. Um, and then along with him on the men's side, Cade Hammond is the returning national champion in diving. And then Julio Asuna just broke one of his school records this past weekend. 
Uh, so really good one-two punch. And then Jason Lenzo has been an All-American every event, every year. Um, so great diving there. Um, really, really good sprint group on the men's side with Jerron Thompson and uh, Joao Silva and Diego Moss. We have distance along with Cedric and Christian Adin and Stas Shalat. We have some, some fifth-year grad transfers uh, in the stroke events um, and actually just grad students in uh, KL York and Bartek Spiderski and Licky at the Prima. Um, so again, it's us on the men's side, it's, it's just depth. We have a lot of big hitters. Uh, women's side, our two fifth years this year are Katie McCoy and Joanna Bice. Uh, both of them are top in the country in their individual events. Uh, KD's won a national championship before. Joanna's been second um, and has been kind of the, the class of D2 this year in the sprint events. She keeps getting better. Um, and then along with her, we have some distance in Emmy Colton Colty, Dumitrescu, and Bena Trausadotter, and Carolina Dubchikova. Um, <laughs> the, 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 Nailing those. I'm glad. That's why I make you talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the names could be tongue twisters. But again, we have swimmers from all over the world. We have yeah. 35 countries on our team, uh, which is, is a cool opportunity to get to know cultures and bring a lot of different things in. A lot of teams in D2 are international, but very rarely do you have this many influences. A lot of times it's, you know, maybe you have 12 Italian swimmers or, or something like that. But we have one or two, maybe three from a lot of different places. Um, which is fun. Um, yeah, so still on the women's side, we have Michaela Starr and Alexis Lumai on the boards, both returning All-Americans. Um, Leticia Vaselli has been All-American at least a dozen times. Um, and she's been a, a big part of those relays that have won the past couple years in the two free relay. Um, Ana E. Scruders is a breaststroker. She's been our top breaststroker this year. Uh, Butterfly, we have Andrea Pasca, we have, and she's also been a national champion relay. Uh, we have a, a load of backstrokers in Mia Kristevska and Yulia Magarovska and El Isabella Revstat, also a former national champion. So, yeah, a, a lots of names, um, but lots of, of big hitters. Um, just really trying to get everybody there. Well, Brent, thank you so much. Exciting times at the University of Indianapolis Swimming and Diving. An opportunity coming up to see the team, but again, for fans of the national championship, for Division II Swimming and Diving, hosted by UND at the IU Natatorium on the campus of IUPUI, March 8th through the 11th. Brent, thank you again so much for the time, and best of luck the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Go Hounds. That's right. UND trailing here at halftime in football, 14 to 10. We'll come back and get back to the football. Highlight stats from the first half, and we'll look ahead to the second here on the Ray Skillman Auto Group Halftime Show on the ISC and GLVC Sports Network. Remember, when it comes to pedestrian safety, <laughs> Greyhounds don't have nine lives. No mascots or linebackers were harmed in the making of this video. Everybody bundled up here at Key Stadium on a snowy Saturday afternoon. This is the Ray Skillman Auto Group halftime show. Matt Holmes joined by Jim Leisure as UND trailing Truman State 14 to nothing at halftime as we take you into our houndgear.com halftime highlights, which many for UND, but again, Truman could not have asked for a better opening 30 minutes here as they got it going. We see a lot of the defense here, Jim, but then Truman kind of got it going in the first quarter. Yeah, Truman has, has actually done a decent job of moving the football and, again, credit the uh, Greyhound defense for stopping some of those drives. At the last minute, you see a fumble right there. That was on the first drive of the, of the game. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the Greyhound defense was not able to stop that very short drive uh, when UND uh, fumbled the ball and it was re returned basically back to about the six. 
This is kind of the game we thought we might see. An excellent one-handed grab by Zerwig that set up the opening touchdown by Nolan Hare going around right in. And again, more of this excellent defense, a couple of sacks. Ewindy getting a sack here. Both teams getting in there. But turnovers also crucial as well. Again, just defense, the story of the game so far, for especially for Truman getting it going. And here is the big fumble made on the play. Landon Donaldson and then recover. Then Nolan Hare, much like the first touchdown, this one doubled the yardage from six yards out. UND had an opportunity late getting it down the field. They threw a pass into the end zone that Logan Caney had an opportunity to break down but was unable to. And UND held scoreless in the opening half and down 14 to nothing. As those are your houndgear.com halftime highlights. And we'll take an opportunity here. Check out our halftime statistics brought to you by the free enterprise system. And again, Truman maybe pass a little bit more than we thought. Both these teams, excellent rushing teams, but also excellent rushing defenses. And as you can see, the rushing defense has been critical today. As so far, Truman has allowed UND zero yards of net rushing. And on the season, UND averages 237 rushing yards per day. What stands out to you there, Jim? Well, missed opportunities. I mean, again, UND has had offensively, they, they've dropped a couple balls. They've They've caught passes and, and would have had either first down yards or close to it and then fumbled. Uh, just missed opportunities all the way around. That's not the end of the world. You're only down 14. You got a chance. And UND will get the ball to start the second half of play. We mentioned the passing. Nolan Hare, 10 of 16, 121 yards. And then also those two touchdown runs. His favorite receiver has been Zach Zerwig, five catches, 58 yards. On the ground, Shamar Griffith, eight carries, 14 yards. That's after having a couple huge games. As coming into this, Truman had been averaging 327 rushing yards per game of their own on the ground. But again, the rush defenses have been as advertised. For UND, Torian on Clinton back after missing three games. UND's all-time leading rusher, seven carries, just 12 yards. And Christian Conklin, seven of 17, 57 yards and has been sacked a couple of times as well. 14 to nothing. UND trailing here at halftime. We'll take one final time out and come back and get you ready for the start of the second half in the IC and GLVC Sports Network. Remember, when it comes to pedestrian safety, Greyhounds don't have nine lives. No mascots or linebackers were harmed in the making of this video. Listen, do you hear that? I get here early so I can enjoy some peace and tranquility, but not anymore. Before very long, there'll be a bunch of families here and there'll be a bunch of rugrats running around, ruining what used to be a wonderful, quiet place. But oh no, the Hound Pound Nation will be here. They'll be raising havoc. This place will be bedlam before very long. I wanted to enjoy myself and have a great, peaceful moment before this game starts. But you know what? It's really worth it. Youngsters having some fun in the snow, making some snowballs. Somebody better watch out and also perhaps taste. Yeah, oh no, it's a <laughs> snack. He's not making a snow cone there. It's good to see the youngster having some fun in our first snow of this upcoming winter. Matt Holmes with Jim Leisure. Long halftime here for both teams, Jim. Let's start uh, with UND, especially kind of that offensive coaching staff. What are you talking about? What? things do you maybe look and did you see in the first half that are opportunities that maybe you can take advantage of to get get something going here in the second well first thing I do is I remind my kids that uh, you know we do run the football that's kind of what we do and we've done it all year we had a bad half that doesn't mean we can't heck come back out and, and fix that uh, in order to run it though again I think you're going to have to run more counters 
more, more misdirection. Seems like the, the UND offensive line is not getting great movement up front on the defensive line for Truman. So again, what I do is I run a lot of down blocks or double teams and then pull a guard or an H back and kick out. So block everybody left, let's say, and then bring the H back to the right uh, and try to create a hole. Let's just make a hole. Okay, uh, and I just I, I stick with it and in a short passing game until I can soften this defense up just a bit. I'm not sure that's possible. This seems like a fairly angry group of young men from Missouri for some reason. And if you're Truman State, Greg Nesbitt, I mean, you'd take more, but I don't know if he could have asked much more out of his team in that opening 30 minutes. What do you think the message was to his guys after 30 minutes and being up 14 nothing? Stay the course and just win the half. All we got to do now, fellas, is just win this half. If we win this half three to nothing, we obviously win the football game. So this turns into a 24, I'm sorry, a 30 minute, I'm used to high school football, yeah. uh, a, a 30 minute game, and we're going to try to win this half. Well, you, Indy, will get an opportunity to show off what those offensive adjustments might be. They'll get the opening kickoff as again, it's just skied high in the air to the up man, Routabush, as one of the regular Buchanan wasn't able to get up there quick enough to take it on the run. And UND will see what they have got. Again, Clinton, seven carries in the first half, just 12 yards, 1.7 yards per rush. He came into the game averaging 7.6 yards per carry. UND's career leader, over 4,400 yards and 55 total touchdowns. And again, a little something different as UND with two, and that might be Jeremiah Lee, but two kind of skill players in the backfield for the first time on this opening play, and Conklin will pass. Throws over the middle, over the linebackers to Jeremiah Lee, and he'll bring it down for a gain of 20 on first down. Well, there's your first adjustment there. Like you said, we're going to get more skilled people in the backfield. We're going to throw on first down. Uh, obviously, I don't believe necessarily that the Truman defense really expected him to come out and throw. Um, went empty backfield, really, because on the snap, the, the, the one back there vacated. So your five guys up front were able to hold those four defensive linemen. Excellent throw by Conkling into a tight window. He'll throw again on first down. This is Bentley out to the right, and he'll bring it in, and that's a gain of eight on first down. As again, they did a lot of first down run in the opening half. This time, two going right to the pass on the first two plays of the second half. And going really quick here, too, so they picked up the tempo. I do like the short, quick passing game. Always have. I think, again, it's always a Seems like you can always get four or five yards whenever you want it. Conkling, hand off to Clinton this time up the middle, and he is hit immediately and dropped after a gain of one by Landon Donaldson. So you're, you're doing kind of a little bit of a hurry up here. Uh, you know, what I do is, is I get to the line of scrimmage, I try a real quick hard count. You got plenty of time on the, the play clock there, but get up there and see if you can't get this first down via the penalty. Uh, defense right now, again, is, is kind of chomping at the bit. They're not they're not happy the fact that it's third and one. They feel uh, like uh, they've, they've let the coach down a little bit, and they're getting ready to attack. So I think I go with a hard count and try to draw them off sides. Four-man front. Buchanan in the backfield for the Hounds. And he'll take the handoff going to the right. Gets outside a right tackle. Gets up field, and nothing but green in front of him. One man coming from the corner. Hits Buchanan. It's going to knock him out of bounds. Touchdown saving tackle by Ryan Olivas as Buchanan is brought down at the one yard line after a gain of 46. Well, you see an excellent seal block there by number 76, Ryan Ritchie, uh, along with uh, another one. I, I think I, I couldn't get a number on. I believe it was either 63, Zachary Chark, uh, Clark, uh, or 61, Kednell Alexis. But two great seal blocks and a huge hole, right? I mean, we're not docking the space shuttle when you block. Good things happen. Empty backfield for Conkling on first and goal from the one. And he'll hand off to Lee. Lee looking for room. He'll bounce it off left tackle. And Uindy takes it down the field on the opening drive of the half and gets on the scoreboard for the first time on a one-yard touchdown run by Jeremiah Lee. Well, that's about as good offensively of a, of a drive coming out of a half as you can expect. What, four or five plays? Mm -hmm. Uh, mixing the run and the pass, mixing the big plays with the short stuff right there. Uh, talk about halftime adjustments. Congratulations. You see a good double team there on the outside by number 44. He was part of that. Ethan Hand uh, playing the H-back position and the left tackle. So good things happen. 
Extra point by Seymour is up and good. And Uindy is on the board and they have cut the deficit in half. 14 to seven here from Key Stadium on the ISC and GLVC Sports Network. Kicks off after a five play, 75 yard touchdown drive. Flint will field the kickoff and bring it up past the 30 before he runs into a scrum. Five play, 75 yard touchdown drive for the Hounds. Jaquan Buchanan with the 45 yard run and then Jeremiah Lee finishes it off. But again, I mentioned Jim of the break, a play I've seen a lot of UND football this year. Haven't really seen where they've used the slot wide receiver and an empty backfield with a straight handoff catching Truman off guard for the one yard touchdown run and a huge change in energy now on this UND sideline it appears. Well let's see if the defense can sustain that energy and again that they did not play poorly in the first half so it shouldn't be that hard for them to keep up the pace. Hare under immediate pressure and he is dropped by Aaron Barnett. Borski got there first Hare spun away from him, and then Aaron Barnett finishes it off with his fifth sack of the season. Coach Keevers and the defensive staff bringing the heat here, just bringing more than they can block, and you're just simply outnumbered. You got a hold there that uh, you know you would have declined anyway. Uh, but yeah, just bringing more than they can block. Now defensively, they made a nice adjustment on Zerwig in the first half. He, he caught five balls, and they finally shut him down. So it looks like they've made a few other adjustments here defensively. Second and 21. Handoff to Griffith down the left, and he fights forward, but he'll just get back to the line of scrimmage after getting hit a couple yards deep in the backfield. I think that was Borski again who initially hit him. But now to be third and 21 and a ton of energy now. There's a lot more bouncing around on this near sideline for the guys in black. Yeah, it's definitely Kyle Borski there gets great penetration. Now here's the deal. And, and again, as a coach, it's just the coach in me. I say great penetration now, two plays in a row. Now we got to dial it down a little bit because we don't want to get caught on the middle screen. You can't run past the, the middle screen guy. Griffith stays in as the running back. It'll just be a straight handoff to him up the middle with a little bit of room to run. He gets 11, but he needed 21. A conservative play call on third and 21, and Cornish will come in now to punt. UND answers, touchdown on the opening drive. Defensively, a three and out on Truman's drive, and the Hounds will get the ball back after this punt by Cornish. Yeah, and definitely a conservative call by Coach Desmond, as you said, uh, saying, you know what, guys, we're just going to punt it, and we're going to try to regroup over here, see if our defense can't come out and help us. Cornish averaging 44 yards per punt. And he gets away another spiraling kick. Derek has to catch it over the shoulder, and the momentum of the punt takes him out of bounds at the 14 yard line. That is where UND will take over for their second drive of the third quarter. Yeah, the 14 is not a bad place. You know, there was a long time in football where, you know, everything was, you know, getting people, pinning people inside the 20. Now that's become the 10. And uh, you're going to see some uh, the whole drive here from University of Indianapolis last time, and there's the big run. As Buchanan getting down, had a lot of success last year. As he in, this, in the game last year, Clinton was out against Truman at the end of the season last year as well, and Buchanan rushed for 94 yards on 34 carries against Truman last year. So he's had success in this matchup. Play action, quick throw out to the left, and too low. 
for Derek to hang on. Conkling just kind of didn't get it high enough and it got through the hands of Derek on first down. But again, doing what you were talking about, quick throw, trying to get some yardage. Unfortunately, Conkling not able to execute on that throw a little low and it'll be second and 10. Yeah, don't let the result basically confuse the idea. The idea was correct. It just, you know, human beings don't always execute and that time Conkling didn't. Hand the tight end in motion. Conkling, throw quick out to his left to Derek, who tries to spin away, gets away from the first man, but some help is there. But he gets seven to make it a manageable third and three for the Greyhounds. Really, really good job there. And again, corner blicks uh, coming off the offensive left side. That offensive line for uh, for you, Indy, basically communicated well, slid that way, picked up the blitzer, gave Conkling time to throw. And that one was caught. Now, again, if you catch the other one, we've, we've got a first down already. Tight formation for the Hounds with Buchanan back in and throwing back on the right. Looks like this will be a free play. Deep pass down the left sideline. Looking for his man, Kamal Ransom, who wasn't able to bring in the one-handed catch, but that might have been a free play. Yeah, I think if it would have been a false start, then they, they would have blown it dead. Yeah, so it's definitely a free play. And again... Unfortunately, another, quote, missed opportunity. And I know that was a really difficult pass up to catch. I'm not, but gosh, if you catch that, you know, I mean, <laughs> talk about momentum now, right? The offsides. So we'll take another look at this opportunity. Ransom had a step on his man. First penalty of the game for Truman, as we mentioned, the fourth least penalized team in the country. They are very, very disciplined. Finally got him, you know, on that mm -hmm. long count. They've been trying it a lot. Finally got him. Conkling throws out short into the flat to Buchanan, who is rolled out of bounds by Ross. And again, credit that Greyhound offensive line, giving him plenty of time. You're going to see those guys are just tied up. Somebody came lo comes loose late, but not before uh, about a five-yard gain. Well, and that was that same formation that we saw to start the first play of the half with the running back and then Jeremiah Lee, the slot wide receiver, lined up kind of in an H-back position. So a kind of formation adjustment that we've seen here to start the opening half for UND to adjust to what Truman is doing defensively. Second down handoff to Buchanan along the left side. He's got room, gets into the open field again, and an ankle tackle brings him down around midfield, but another nice run by Buchanan. UND starting to open some holes that weren't there in the opening half. Yeah, that's what I call middle zone. You have inside zone, which is A-gap, you know, center guard, and then you have middle zone, which is tackle. He's going to run at a 45-degree angle, and then when he sees a flash of, of an opposing jersey, you tell your kids, plant your foot and go north. The defense is going to over-pursue, and you, can, you might be able to cut underneath them. Yeah, Kendall Hutchinson, the desperation tackle to bring Buchanan down. Conklin again, quick pass out to the left. Give it three yards to Derek as he had to dive back to make the catch. And another great pickup there by the uh, left tackle, 64, Ryan Butcher. Going to see him right there, boom. And just and then that's a blitz, and, and then if you don't pick that guy up, you know, that's a much tougher throw for Conklin. Yeah, Butts, a freshman from Decatur, Illinois, who has started the last... This is his fourth straight start at left tackle after starting the season as a backup at right tackle. Throw out to the right to Lee, and it was in his hands, but wasn't able to bring it in. Yeah, just misfired just a little bit. You know, the ball's a little bit high. Make sure if you're conkling that you stay out on that front foot. Don't let your weight drift back. That's a lot of times what causes balls to kind of sail on and you when, there. And when it's this cold and it's obviously yeah. wet in the snow, what does that do? Obviously a little slicker. Is, is, it, is it harder, too, when you get this cold? You know what? I always found that if you play with a newer football, when it gets wet, it'll get real tacky. If you play with an older ball, which a lot of quarterbacks like that old beat-up whoopee that they use, here comes a blitz. Blitz thrown over the middle, looking for Lee, and he brings it in between three defenders. Conkling against the pressure on the money to Jeremiah Lee. But an older football that doesn't have the, the little dimples, basically, when it gets wet, it gets just, I mean, honestly, as slippery as ice. And a great job of catching the ball in traffic there. A little bit of a risky pass, but, you know, at the same time, this is the conference championship on the line here. Why not take a chance? You're losing, And right? the confidence in Conkling, he threw to Lee pass before. He dropped it. He goes right back to Lee to pick up a huge third down. Conkling again. 
Time to throw, deep down the left sideline, looking for his tight end, and he underthrew it in the interception drop by Ben Thomas. Thomas leads the GLDC in interceptions with four, and he is pounding the ground that he missed out on number five. Well, Coach Keevers and his offensive staff putting a lot of pressure on this, uh, on this Bulldog defense, once again releasing the back immediately. So it's an effectively an empty set. It's five receivers. And if the offensive line can continue to block four uh, with five, should still be a good play. A huge break for UND that one of the top defensive backs in the conference unable to bring down the interception. Can they take advantage? Play action. Conkling, double clutches. Punt high up in the air into the end zone. Caught by Derrick at the goal line. Touchdown, UND. You know, Matt, that's very similar to a play we saw early in the ball game where Conkling is on the left hash, and he looks left, looks left, looks left, has time, credit that offensive line again, and then he just throws a ball as far as he can to the right side. Luckily for him, it hung up, like you said, almost like a punt, and uh, the catch was made right in front of the goal line. And then it was like, you know what, I'm here. Why don't I just cross over? There we go. How about that? Yeah, Kendall Hutchinson, the safety, just never found the ball, and he was more focused on trying to avoid running into Derek and picking up a pass interference. As we get a flag here after the extra point that was good. But you mentioned like a punt. Alonzo Derek is the punt returner well. for UND, so he's used to fielding, <laughs> I guess, a high pass, but a huge play for the Hounds as we'll wait to see what this penalty is, but UND not able to get anything going in the opening half, and they come out here in the second half and march down the field 75 yards and then 86 yards. So unsportsmanlike conduct on Ryan Ritchie, and it'll be enforced on the kickoff. 10 play, 86 yard drive, 29 yard touchdown pass, Christian Conkling to Alonzo Derrick and the Hounds are in business as in the first half, UND, as we mentioned, not able to get a lot going for UND. Oh, that's after, excuse me. Yes. Sure, it's the halftime one. Sorry about that, Jim. UND in the opening half of play, just 57 total yards. They're already up to 213 yards of total <laughs> offense after 75 and 86 yard touchdown drives here in the third quarter. And now you look at that sideline again, as we mentioned it, just a whole new energy on UND after a kind of a pretty demoralizing first 30 minutes. And you look across to the guys in white, now they're kind of look like how the UND sideline looked in the first half. Well, and again, what, what it boils down to, early on I thought Truman came out and they threw the football more than I really thought they would. And it seemed to catch the, uh, the, bull, or the Greyhound uh, defense off a little bit. Well, now flip it, you know. This is a UND team that has run the football all year long. And now all of a sudden they're throwing it and it's creating problems for the uh, Bulldog defense. Hounds have to kick from the 20 now as Flint gets it on the short kick. Again, they had to kick it farther and he's gonna take it up. And Truman, the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. You and he's gotta kick it from further back and now Truman will start inside you in the territory. Have you tried a Prairie Farms milk snack? Delic delicious chocolate cake bars filled with real milk cream and covered in chocolate. They're made with no preservatives or artificial colors. Perfect as an anytime, anywhere snack. Visit our website at prairiefarms.com slash milk snacks and enter to win a free four pack. Great field position though for Truman to try and answer the 14 consecutive for UND. Blitz, thrown out to the side to haul the tight end and it is incomplete. The line judge said it bounced. Hall disagrees. Yeah, I think honestly, I think Hall's just kind of begging because it, <laughs> it clearly looked like it bounced. And again, the official's right there. I mean, the guy's five feet from it. I'm 400 feet from it. It looked to me like it bounced. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I, of course, no replay at this level, so we'll never know. But um, great, great shot by our crew there. Yeah. yeah. But the pressure again of you into yep. sent. So go ahead and bring pressure, but again, keep your eye on Zerwick. And Hare, again, Hare, an undersized 5'10", quarterback for Truman. 
Handoff to Griffith up the middle this time, and that's Honeyus again who dives in to submarine him and will bring up third and about nine and a half. Yeah, I don't know who's having a more impressive game, Honeyus or Thomas uh, for, for Truman State. They've both just been everywhere making plays. Neither one of them particularly you know, a, a big player, but playing much bigger than their size. That's the sixth tackle for Honeyus. Hear the cowbells, UND trying to get this crowd into the game to go along with the sideline. Denim Cook. Sidecar left for Hare. Blitz again. Borski gets a hand on him. Barnett is there, ball thrown down the sideline, and it is incomplete as the pressure gets home to Hare one more time. But I'll know, no, there's a flag late. There's a flag late. This might be an after the flag penalty, which again may, may still make it. Well, again, we think it might be, again, after the play during the celebration by UND, potentially in the category of taunting, perhaps, but we'll wait to hear from the officiating crew, and that would be a, you want to have enthusiasm and excitement, but it's got to be a little bit controlled. Let's wait and hear what this penalty is here. Truman was pointing at UND. Landry Mavungu called for taunting and after a huge play by UND he was there with the coverage and made a motion towards the sideline and the official did not hesitate you can't do that yeah, that's too basically I, I'm going to uh, assume that the original one on the extra point was also some type of taunting so that's uh, that gave him great field position and now give him a huge huge first down because that's fourth and nine you're not going for that pressure comes again and Hare is swallowed up Borski again he is didn't call his name a lot in the first half but Borski has taken over at his defensive end spot here in the second half he gets a sack the junior from Naperville Illinois yeah again just I, I don't know what happened to the offensive line uh, for Truman, whether they're, you know, the starters went home and thought it was in the bag or what, but right now they are just getting mauled by this defensive front. Now, Indy is bringing fives, more than their typical four, and, and, and sometimes six, uh, which is outnumbering them at times because now you got a little bitty running back trying to block one of his linebackers. Probably not going to happen. Um, really impressive right now by this front six, I guess, for you, Indy. Short pass by Hare is caught. No, broken up by Zerwig as he was hit from behind by Michael Brown to break it up. And it's going to be another third down, third and long. And not that you lose him in these, but we maybe haven't brought it up. But towards the end of the first half, Colin Sutton, the backup quarterback that Truman would use as a change of pace, as a runner, he got knocked out of the game in the first half. So, and they used him a few times on these second and longs to try and get some of that yardage back. We have not, he was carried off the field and has not been back. So UND has not had to make that adjustment for them moving quarterbacks in and out of the game. Yeah, and if you're Coach Keevers, you're saying, now we're playing even. My guy can't run very good, yours can't either. And a late flag, maybe in the position of delay of game. Did they not get it off in time? No. False start is the call. Yeah, we talked earlier in the ball game that one of the things with, with Conkling and is he does not have that ability really to run the football as a threat. He can run it as a scramble and maybe keep a play alive and stuff like that, but you're not having to devote a defender to him. All right, and now, right now, neither is you, Indy, for Hare, because Hare doesn't seem to have any desire to run it either. Well, it just hasn't, the pressure has gotten there almost too quick for him to break any kind of contain it. Just a three-man rush this time for the Hounds. Thrown over the middle, and it is caught close to the sticks by Tate Crane. It's going to be, look, based on the spot, it looks like it's going to be fourth and one. And it is going to be fourth and one, but what a throw by Nolan Hare to Tate Crane. And this is about the fourth or fifth, third and long that, uh, Truman has converted against the UND defense. Just unfortunate. You play so well and you do everything you, that, that, that you want as a defense, 
you're getting pressure on the quarterback, you're sacking, you're getting TFLs, tackle for losses, and then you just give it up on third down. Well, they went conservative that time with only yep. a three-man rush. Truman, we mentioned, one of the best in the country, 9 of 10 on fourth down this season. This is their first attempt this afternoon. Hare just will run it straight ahead into the line. Did he get it? You Indy doesn't think so, and based on the spot, it looks like the Hounds have held and stopped Nolan Hare on fourth down. Well, the head linesman, the guy on the other side, would before he came in to spot it. First down, you Indy. He went in. He came back, and that, that's not a good sign if, if you're wanting yardage to be picked up. So hats off to this defense, man. They're just doing, you know, all they can. They're not necessarily mauling people. But see, this is Hare's. I mean, and I, I understand what you were saying earlier. You know, he hasn't really had time to run. I don't even think he really wants to run. I mean, that's just not his game. His game is to throw the football, roll out, you know, RPOs and that kind of stuff. That running stuff for the other kid. Well, it, and that's maybe an opportunity. That's a play on fourth and one that Sutton maybe comes in and oh, run it. No. He's out of the game. That's yeah. a Sutton package, and they run it with hair. And UND gets the huge stop. Conklin will roll to his right on first down. Looking, looking, and he throws it out of bounds as he was planted, and we're going to get a roughing the passer. Alex Delvecchi, he was there on the pressure. Conkling smartly throws it away, and then he was planted, and the referee immediately threw the flag in the area what I think is going to be roughing the passer. I don't think there's any doubt, and again, what a really boneheaded play. That's just... Yeah, that's the senior. You get it. So now it's over. It's over. Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah. If he lets him go, yeah. he's yeah. fine. But he continued to drive through the passer and a textbook roughing the passer call. And then use the body weight and all that stuff. Now, again, I guarantee you, because I've heard officials do it, the white hat will say, balls away, balls away. You know, or just, you know, plays over, plays yeah, try over. Try to help him out. You know, yeah. And, and, and then you just keep playing and. Conklin, and he is going to get immediately hit and dropped as a little bit of pressure with the blitz from Truman that time and Peyton Carr on the strong safety blitz. Yeah, and a little bit of a miscommunication here because nobody picks him up. Basically, you sent everyone left. You saw the back go left. You saw the line go left. Can't do that. You know, we can send five of them left and bring one of them back, but you can't send them all that way. Well, and he got hit blind, and a yeah. good job by Conkling to somehow hang on to that ball getting hit from his blind side by Peyton Carr. An adjustment now as Carr blitzes again. This time they'll hand off to Buchanan along the left side looking for some room. Get maybe five. Again, that kind of uh, middle zone there. The, to me, there's, there's three kinds of zone running plays. You have the inside zone, then you have the tight end zone, which is what I call middle, and then you have wide zone or stretch where you're really trying to get to the numbers. And uh, that was uh, ran into the, the boundary there, the short side of the field. All they're trying to do is just get some forward yardage there. Typically on a middle zone, you're hoping to get four or five. Third and 13 for the Hounds. Caney in motion. Five at the line and five come for Truman. Conkling gets it away, throws it short to Jeremiah Lee. And Truman is there, no additional yardage and the punt unit will come on for the Hounds. Once again, those good protection. You know, that, that's been a, a big big key to this, this second half. If you can protect Conkling, he's good enough that you give him time, he can beat you here. You see the protection. Again, the, the, uh, the way it's supposed to work, the, guard, the two guards in the center are supposed to set the, the tone and the tackles are supposed to work it out. And they're, they're you know, you'll, you'll always hear about the thing, the pocket. That's what a pocket is. Zoller, high punt, plenty of hang time, and no return for Ben Thomas. Truman finally gets a stop after UND scores on its first two drives of the third quarter. Starting at their 26 for Truman. 
Hound send the blitz again, looking to break it up on a run blitz, and I think that was Honeyus again. Or excuse me, that is Schult Schulte, the linebacker, who got there that time to drop him for a loss of three. I think both of them came, though, Honeyus and Schulte. Yep, you see Honeyus right there. He gets held. My gosh, he got held. <laughs> he gets held. Uh, but, yeah, you, and again, when, when you blitz on first down, you, you can certainly run blitz and, and be disruptive. You're, you're, you're just outnumbering people. Now, if you have a team that likes to pull people, that disrupts the pulling guards. It disrupts the H-backs. Uh, so run blitzes can be very effective as well. Hair throw to the right side and nothing going. The flag comes down as Michael Brown was there in coverage on Tate Crane. And I'm not sure that pass was catchable, but Brown might not have got his head around to, to find the ball, which a lot of times is what they look for. Yeah, and again, we say it all the time. We'll, we will have the benefit of the replay. The officials weren't or won't. Um, uh, it's just hard to see just how quickly he got there. And then there's always, you know, th there is such a thing as incidental contact. You see the replay here if we can get it. You know, you got to ask yourself, uh, officials, even in basketball, will, will work off of a, an advantage-disadvantage principle. Did the contact give the defender an advantage? Apparently, in that case, uh, the wing official believed that it did. Sometimes you'll see contact, and they, they won't feel that it gave anybody an advantage. They won't throw it. 15 yards. Fake the handoff thrown. Long the hash to Matt Hall, the tight end. And seven yards on first down for, for Hall. Yeah, come on to Houston up here. Really sure tackle here. Uh, you got to make sure that you get it. Look like they might have been in man protection. So if, if he gets away from you, there's nobody else. Denham Cook is in as the running back now, but again, see if Truman goes back to run on a second and short. Play action again. Hare looking at his left. Now he's going to go back to his right, looking for room to go. Gets by Honeyus, gets up field, and he'll pick up a first down on a nice bit of nifty scrambling by Hare. And yeah, well, just again, it looked like there was a whole lot of grabbing up there on the offensive line. And I'm an offensive line coach by trade, and but uh, you know you can just tell when kids are being held, they're getting turned inside out, they're getting spun around. Um, that's hard to do when you're behind a guy without holding. This might be the last play of the quarter here. UND down 14 at the half. Handoff inside to Shamar Griffith. He's hit by Gary Air. For a gain of just one. The clock is going to tick down. So trailing by 14 at halftime, UND answers here in the third quarter, scores on their first two drives, and we'll go into the final 15 minutes. These teams tied at 14 to decide the Great Lakes Valley Conference champion. At Aqua Systems, we believe in one simple idea that it should be easy to get great water. That's why we provide a hassle-free sales process with money-back guarantees and the best warranties anywhere, all on equipment made in the USA. In fact, at Aquasystems, we make it so easy to fix your home's water that nine out of 10 people who shop with us buy from us. Contact Aquasystems today. You'll love your water. Back in my day, we didn't tailgate. We stood in the rain for three hours watching the grass grow, and we liked it. Go Hounds! Race Gum and Buick GMC truck was just awarded GMC Dealer of the Year. Come see why. And drive away in a new GMC Acadia for as little as $2.29 a month. US 31 South. Or I-465 in East Washington Street or RaceGilmanCars.com. Great view of Key Stadium in this game to decide the Great Lakes Valley Conference Championship. Number 14, UND. Number 20, Truman. Both teams 8-1. Both teams 5-0 in the conference. Winner is conference champion. 
winner goes to the NCAA Division II National Championship playoffs. And how appropriate is this? High score, ball at midfield. That's right. Right. Nobody really has. I mean, obviously Truman has the football, but it's right in the middle of the field, man. No advantage. 15 minutes. Who wants it? Second and nine. Hare. Deep down the left side. He's got his tight end. Hall for a big gain inside the 15-yard line. There's a flag on the field, and it is in the area of holding. And, I, again, I, it, and, and I'm not rooting for anybody, right? I don't care who wins this game. I really don't. But it, it, it does appear to me that the, the, the guys in the white and purple have been just grabbing. John Saxbury. The junior from Monroe City, Missouri. He was back behind the play talking to the referee. As finally, if you're a UND fan and probably has been looking for that, they get it. So a big gainer to Hall inside the 15 called back on the holding to be. Let's see the replay here. And I really didn't see much. Um, but uh, what it boils down to, again, is it's just been going on and going on. The officials a lot of time will say, hey, 52, you know, do this or do that. And if you don't do it, they're going to flag it. Four-man rush. Deep down the seam again, looking for the other tight end. And broken up, Schulte breaks it up as he was looking for Chris Kerr. As Truman definitely looking for that advantage of the big tight ends, Hall and Chris Kerr against the linebackers. That time, Kerr not able to get the separation, and Schulte, good job to not pick up a penalty and break it up. Schulte's really all over the field. Obviously, he's downfield in the secondary. Uh, there was a previous play when they were right before the end of the third quarter where he came in from his linebacker position and literally just eliminated another human being off the face of the earth, just blew him up. Well, and asking a lot, these linebackers who, yeah. again, Truman a little bit unique. You don't see a team's feature... Division two, a lot of two tight end offenses where you're throwing a lot to the tight ends. Hand off to Denham Cook, and he's going to get a nice carry again on third and long back past the original line of scrimmage. So he gets 10 and maybe give a better opportunity for the punter Cornish to pin you Indy inside not just the 20, but I'm sure the goal here is try to pin him inside the 10. Without question, that is the counter play that I've been talking about. I'd like to see both teams run more of where they bring a backside guard and an H back. And you start left, you come back right. You got a kick out block and a turn up. You got to have that kick out block. That's the key. And they get a timeout. You and there was some confusion. They got a player on the field late. They might have had too many guys or not enough guys, but it was all right in front of Chris Keevers. And the Hounds have to burn a timeout to perhaps avoid a penalty on the play. So we'll take a timeout as well. We're knotted at 14, fourth quarter. GLVC championship on the line with GLVC and ISC Sports Network. When medical care is needed, where will you turn? With Communities Connect to Care program, one call or click finds you the closest open appointment. Request a time yourself or let us do it. From a primary care doctor or virtual visit, to a med check or community clinic at Walgreens. Just call or click. You can go right to our website or to me. Connect to Care from Community. UND burns the timeout as you see Alonzo Derrick back deep to receive this punt. What'll be the fifth punt of the afternoon for Cornish. And he gets it away, a low end over end kick, caught by Caney at the 20. Just unexpectedly got his hands up. But you know what? That might have saved 10, 15 yards to be down. That was a low kick going away from Derek. Derek was never going to get up there in time. And having Caney and other wide receivers, the up guy, able to catch it and salvage better field position, I think, for you, Indy. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. That's why he's there, those short kicks and uh, – you know, there's no way it would have reached the, the deep guy. Now, he caught it again, maybe gotten a big bounce. But if you don't get the big bounce, you got the football inside the tent. Now, he did take two big shots. I'm glad he <laughs> held on to the football. Offsides, deep pass down the right sideline, looking for a man, and it is thrown too long for Ransom. As we're going to get 
offsides on Truman, it appears. That's Greco called for offsides. It'll be first and five for the Hounds. Indiana Members Credit Union is proud to support the University of Indianapolis and offers a free UND debit card with a free checking account and e-statements. Get your UND debit card today and show your school spirit. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online at imcu.com. Membership savings required, federally insured by NCUA. First and five for the Hounds after the offsides on Truman. Handoff to Buchanan going right. And then he is upended. Good play coming up. I believe that was Donaldson again. But a nice gain, too. Again, you're running that kind of outside jet cut or outside. That's more outside zone. He's trying to get past the numbers. And uh, just like you said, good defensive play kept that from being a first down. Thirteen minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of a tie ball game. Play action this time. Conklin rolling to his left. Needs to find somewhere to go. Now back to his right. Steps up in the pocket. He's got a man wide open. That's Buchanan along the sideline. And what a play by Conkling to keep the play alive long enough to bring it all the way back to what had to have been his fourth or fifth option on the play in Jaquan Buchanan. And what a play by Ethan Hand. Yeah, Conklin gets off. Look at, look at Hand just, I mean, if he's not there just hustling, just being a pest, Conklin gets killed. I'm telling you, Conkling owes, owes him a beverage, a Coke or something. Yeah, hand to the tight end, going there, holding off Jack Weltha. That's a defensive end against a tight end and gave him the time he needed. And hand, I think, has played pretty much exclusively. I don't think we've seen McNeilis, the other tight end. Jet sweep to Lee, cut it upfield. Now gets to the outside and upfield and past the first down marker on a big run by Jeremiah Lee. Got a nice block. I believe that was Ransom, the wide receiver who helped open it up along the left side. Yeah, it definitely was. And again, you're going to see a nice kick out block there. Boom. All right. And again, don't hold deck. Going to get those hands inside. <laughs> uh, but a good kick out block. And that's outside zone. That That's getting to the perimeter. You're just everybody's blocking one And you one. talked about that in the first half. Get these skill guys yep. out in space yep. and speed and take advantage of the width of the field. And you saw that there. Jeremiah Lee has been a lot more involved here in the second half. Again, a guy, a quick, fast Speed player for you, Indy. Buchanan up the middle. And he'll get about six yards, and that might have been the most successful between the tackles right, right. run you Indy's had all day. And they're using hand, you know, as a fullback. I mean, honestly, yeah. he's got a fullback number. He looks like a fullback more than a tight end. Normally, you like your tight ends to be about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but hand goes up there and just occupies a linebacker and a nice job. You talked about McNellis, I think. He kind of hobbled off uh, earlier, and I don't know if maybe that's why we're not seeing him in. Yeah, no, he definitely got hit early in the in yeah. the first half and was one of the plays where we had an injured player. And just looking down, I just happened to notice that I don't believe I've seen him since. Quick throw out to the side. Derek, sure hand. No, he dropped it. Ben Thomas there again. Well, at the risk of sounding like the president of the Ethan Hand fan club, they lined him up at left tight end, and he was wide open up the seam. And I'm sure the coaches up in the box are, are you know, communicating that down. You don't have to run it here, but it, it's in your pocket. They, they're not covering hand. So the next time we run something like that, fake the out, go right up the seam. That's the fourth pass breakup for Ben Thomas today. Thomas is player. Yeah, he's very good. Potentially too far to kick. This could also maybe be four down territory. Hand off to Buchanan going to his right. Looking to get it outside and a huge open field tackle by Peyton Carr to drop him for a loss. Yeah, Carr just, you know, we used to call it desire, the desire drill where you, it's just double hook drill and he refuses to be hooked. He just keeps working, 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 using that sideline as his 12th defender. Uh, hats off to that. Oh, man, that's a really, really big time play. Yeah, and you get the loss and even though you're inside the 40, this has kind of turned into a defensive field position game. Do you like this here to kind of still punt in this situation you at know, fourth and eight? I don't know with the, with the time and, and, and the, 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 the game being so big. I mean, again, I just don't know you're going to gain much. This is going to be key. 
and it takes a great bounce, dies in the snow, and is going to be downed at the five-yard line. So plus 33, so yeah, certainly. I mean, again, if you'd have told me, but we're going to dad it on the three, I'd go with it, yeah, well, it's fun. <laughs> you know, but you don't always get that. Sometimes the ball, you know, goes out of bounds at the 22. Well, you I end think up with a plus 11. Well, I think the run on third and five, too, was probably thinking that you were willing to go for it on fourth down there. Yeah, but then the loss. But then you pick up a loss, and Zoller celebrates his outstanding punt. He's had a nice game. Yeah, by far the most action that he's seen yeah. in his young career, the freshman from Louisville, St. Xavier High School. And I know right here, you know, it, 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 it's high risk but high reward. I bring pressure. You know, I, I put my guys in, man, I said, I'm just hoping mine's better than yours, and I bring pressure. And sure enough, they do, and it's a handoff instead. Griffith spins away. He was hit at the line and gets a nice positive gain before being tackled by Garrier. They were thinking it. They brought that yeah. kind of run blitz again, and Griffith snuck through. Yeah, and again, like I said, it's high risk and, and, and high reward. If, you know, if you get it, you know, you tackle the ball here right there at the one-yard line. If you don't get it, and then we don't, and they don't get that tackle right there, he goes 98. So, um, yeah, two got two guys hit him at the line, and Griffith again listed at 5'5", 150. Had the low center of gravity to get away. Fake to Cook, thrown out to the right and too short, looking for Noah Copeland. Long throw out to the wide side of the field and wasn't able to get it there. Kind of taking a page out of the UND playbook there where you roll left, throw right. All the way back across the field and oddly enough, the ball ended up short. Third and four for Truman. They bring Kerr, Chris Kerr back into the game along with Matt Hall. So they have both of their big tight ends. Kerr, three to the left. And then and Matt Hall is on the line, tight end next to the left tackle. Nobody in the backfield beside Hare. Harry looks left, throws, and it is caught, and they immediately signal that it's a first down. Wow. Sure-handed catch by Hall. Looked to me like the stick was just slightly beyond that white line, and the ball is being put right on the white line, so kind of a quick call, but... Yeah, and you know, I started to say before the we're going to see, I guess the sticks right on the white line. Although you could argue that the ball never really got there. Uh, you know, you can't give up a big play there if, there if you're UND's defense. If you give up the first down, you're still good. They they still got to go 85 yards, but you don't want to give up the 40 yarder. Hand off to Griffith again. Gavon, the corner comes up. Schulte wraps him at the line. No gain. The clock is clicked, has ticked under nine minutes remaining. Again, these teams have been involved in plenty. Even though UND leads the all-time series eight to one, there have been plenty of close games, including last year, which was a 13-10 UND win in Kirksville. Now, two really good programs. I mean, that's what yeah. it boils down to. You're not talking about football teams here. You're talking about programs. Hare looking to throw, ball is loose, and they're going to say deflected and call it a pass. Honey has hit him as he threw, and it'll be third down. Well, Honey has hit him, and then again, young man who's had a big game, Schulte, I think had a shot at it here. Got to bring it down. No, it went off the, he threw it. It went off the helmet of his, of his right linemen. tackle, yeah. Joe Fanny. Now's the, the one you want. You know, that, that little third and a couple there earlier, if you give that up, no big deal. You still play football, but now you want to get off the field. There's two main guys tonight have been Hall and Zerwig. They're both on the right. He's looking again in the middle and said he's going to roll to his left, and he's got to bring it down, and he's going to be held up by Garrier and dropped for a loss on the sack. Good coverage in the secondary that he couldn't find anything as he tried to buy more time. And you know what? The best part of this play right here is as he's going out of the bounds there, you see a lot of kids will shove him. or the, You know what? You won, right? The war is over, son. <laughs> let's, let's don't get a 15-yard penalty there. Well, they got one first down, did Truman, but the, the option from the 37 
Head coach Chris Kievers decides to send his punt unit out. Zoller drops a lob wedge down at the five. And one first down, but then a stop and a loss. So back to the line of scrimmage. And now, depending on what this punt looks like from Cornish, UND with an opportunity to take over around midfield. Yeah, you know, getting back to the decision by Coach Kievers, I mean, that's obviously what coaching is. You make those decisions. He decided to punt it, believed in his kids, thought they could down it inside the 10. They did. Uh, if he doesn't, the ball goes out of bounds at the 22. You get a plus 11 or whatever, and all of a sudden he's he's the GOAT. You know, so, uh, you know, that's just what it is. Worked out for him that time. I think we're trying to re I think we're trying to fix the clock here. I see the referee looking at the clock, and that's why nothing's running. Because they blew it dead, I think, before he went out of bounds. So the clock probably shouldn't have stopped. I would agree with that. And then uh, then they also moved it over to the left hash, too, because mm -hmm. he went out of bounds on that left sideline. Or at least he got stopped. His yeah, going forward yeah. Mo yeah. momentum got stopped. Forward progress. Yeah. I think. Well, and certainly Chris Kievers, a defensive coach, longtime defensive coordinator for Bob Bartolomeo yeah. before he got the head job has been aggressive as a head coach. He's not afraid to go for it on fourth down, but his roots kind of in that defense field position and certainly content to trust his defense and the way they played, not, not just the second half, all game long, to force Truman to try to go the length of the field and his defense gets a stop and forces a punt. Minimal rush, high kick. Derek calls for a fair catch and like we said, he's gonna catch it right at the UND 49-yard line, so the Hounds, again, trying to go ahead. UND has never led 14-0 at halftime. Truman led. The Greyhounds came out of the locker room, 75-yard touchdown drive, 86-yard touchdown drive, and then it has turned into a defensive stalemate again from that standpoint, and you, know, you couldn't ask much more from this game. It has delivered two nationally ranked teams in the top 20, both 8-1, both 5-0 and in the conference, and it has been that kind of battle all afternoon long, and UND now with an opportunity, good field position again, looking to get perhaps their first lead of the afternoon. Conkling. A little time, throws deep, looking over the middle of the field, finds Derek, he's got it, into the end zone, touchdown Greyhounds! 51 yards, Conkling to Alonzo Derrick. A great protection again. That time they brought a, a guard from the right to left to make it look like run action, uh, you know, the play action fake. And that time they capitalized. I mean, they've had guys open. You see 63 pulling a nice block there, and they fire the ball downfield. And uh, touchdown. I mean, they, they've got what's really honestly been there off and on all day. Only that time they connected. Seymour on for the extra point. And he remains perfect on the year, 50 for 50. And the Hounds are on top, 21 to 14 on the GLVC and ISC Sports Network. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 1.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Brad Wilson, offensive coordinator. All it took was one play. UND has been a run team this season, but they have gone to the pass here in the second half. And his quarterback, Christian Conkling, delivers one play, 51 yards to Alonzo Derrick. Conkling up to now 221 yards passing on the afternoon. Derrick, eight catches, 123 yards, and two touchdowns to put U Indy in front, 21 unanswered in the second half for the Greyhounds. Yeah, you got to adjust. Obviously, in the first half, uh, Truman State did a fantastic job of stuffing the run. So you say, you know what? We got a guy throw a little bit. Why don't we see what he can do? This will be returned from the 10 by Flint. 
He is spun down after a nice return to the 35 by Jalen Wilson. Help UND Athletics continue to succeed by giving to the Greyhound Club. Your support enables UND to compete at the highest level. Visit getinvolved.und.edu slash Greyhound Club dash give to make your gift today. You know, Matt, a couple years ago, I played in the Greyhound Club uh, golf tournament. Uh, I was so bad, they asked me <laughs> never to return. <laughs> oh, no. They said, we, don't even, we don't even want your money. You're so bad. It's a scramble. You got three <laughs> other guys. I'm still <laughs> Hair on play action. He'll throw it down the left sideline. An excellent coverage. Copeland unable to bring it down. Jalen Gavon, redshirt freshman from Plainfield, Illinois, there on the play. He was expected to be the starter in the preseason, then was injured, but now he has played a lot here today opposite Landry Mavungu. Excellent coverage there. He just had inside leverage and just was able to swat the ball down at the last second. Hare fakes it again. Borski gets through, but not able to get him. Hare rolls right, throws back over the middle, and just a little bit behind Zerwig. Sets up third and ten. Yeah, if Borski gets there, I <laughs> I hate to think uh, what kind of physical damage could have been done there. You're <laughs> going to see on the replay here. And again, he's supposed to have outside contain, which he does give up because he committed. Uh, but then again, really nice secondary play there to bust that up. Borski, Shelton, Aaron Barnett will be the three down linemen as the Hounds go to their 3-3-5 package that they'll trot out on third and long defensively. Hare holds. He'll step up in the pocket, looking to run. Gets up field, past the first down marker, and he needed 10, and he gets 20 on an excellent scramble by Nolan Hare. Just great awareness. You know, as quarterbacks, you go back to pass. Uh, defensive linemen are taught to go inside hip, and that time Borski goes too far upfield. He sees that immediately. I mean, honestly, it looks like the Red Sea when it happens, and just go get it. Just go take it. Yeah, they tried to run him kind of on that fourth down play earlier. You know, the direct play, not his go, but when he is within the confines of a passing play and scramble, he is more than capable of getting it upfield. He has both. Touchdown say rushing. Quick throw over the middle to Kerr, and he's not able to bring it away. Michael Brown and Cavante Houston, the safety sandwiched him to prevent the catch. Well, if you're a defensive lineman, basically the four of them, they're coached. The two defensive ends are supposed to go to the upfield shoulder of the quarterback, do their pass rush move, whether it's a bull rush, rip, swim, whatever, and but, but have a, an angle at the upfield shoulder. The two interior linemen have the inside hip. And if one of those guys goes too far, again, unfortunately for a defensive line, it just really looks like a huge hole for any quarterback. And a lot of them will say, you know what, I'll take it. Thank you. Hounds blitz six. Hare with time again, still on his feet somehow. And then Aaron Barnett grabs him and brings him down. That was a long play. And Barnett finishes it off, but I think you got to. They talk about coverage sacks. That yeah. feels like a coverage sack to me, Jim. Well, that and honestly, that you know, you see all the time half sacks. You could give like eight sacks here because you got about eight black shirts there. Any one of them could have got him. I mean, got, I don't know how he got out of that. To be honest with you, and uh, if he hadn't got out of that, then uh, Schulte would have blew him up. So huge, huge play here. And if you're Truman, you want to try to get at least seven or eight here to make your fourth down attempt if you choose to do it. A little more manageable. Fourth sack of the afternoon for the Hounds defense. Third and 19. Hare down the left sideline. Diving catch. And it is brought in and caught. Crane. What a play by the sophomore from Iowa City. Just a little bit of a breakdown in coverage. Safety a little late coming over the top. And... I mean, again, nice play. That's just a great catch, and that's what you expect your kids to do. Uh, if he drops it, you go, okay, well, it was a tough catch, but you expect him to catch it, and he did. 
Yeah, kind of a two deep coverage. Crawford, the corner, let him run by. And as you mentioned, the safety not able to get there. Hare now in first and 10. He's going to roll to his right, fakes the pass, and then slides down for no gain in front of Honeyus and Schulte. Under five minutes now. You know, it always seems like Honeyus and Schulte are always together. You know, I wonder if they like, you know, double date together. You know, <laughs> they're just always together, man. They're always coming on blitzes. They're always right there, you know, attacking the quarterback. Those yeah. guys are joined at the hip. A long history of excellent linebacker play at UND and Honeyus and Schulte and Gary Air, who we've called as well. Yes. Living up to that tradition. Crane, who made the big catch a moment ago, he is the solo receiver on the right. Hare's just going to take a direct run, and Honeyus slices through the line and drops him for another loss. Well, they tried a little uh, misdirection on the offensive line there, and what that does is create ha uh, holes or gaps. You know, as linebackers, you always hear coaches say, go to the open window. You see an open window, go. There's an open window, 75 pulls. I fill that open window. Yeah, they might have just missed him there, too. He just kind of hid there, and no one got to Honeyus. I think it's a family member here. There's a big <laughs> Honeyus fathead blow of his head that they're waving in the crowd. Pressure comes again. Hare throws quick, and it's intercepted at the 25-yard line. Plenty of room to run in front of him. He's got blockers up the sideline is Cavante Houston. He's still on his feet. Touchdown, UND, 75-yard pick six for Cavante Houston. Well, the pressure does it again. He has to hurry the throw, throws it right. There wasn't even anybody over there. Now watch this, great job. Don't block in the back, don't hold. Just get in people's way. You coach those kids, just make them go right or left. Again, the pressure. Not a, not a white shirt near it. And here come the blockers. And you practice this stuff, man. You practice this, this, this pick drill, and you practice not blocking in the back. Looks like you and he's going to get a sideline warning for the celebration, <laughs> which, you know, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty expected after a huge play like that. Fifth interception of the season for Houston. That's the most in the Great Lakes Valley Conference this season and perhaps the dagger for the Hounds to now go up two touchdowns after a 75-yard interception return touchdown for Cavante Houston. Hare had to throw it quick on the blitz. And UND was looking to get one, and they did. Yeah, I'd love to see really what he, what he saw because there was not a white shirt anywhere near there. There was two black shirts. Um, I, it didn't look like he was trying to throw it out of bounds over the head like sometimes you see. Just very, very ill-advised. Too bad because the kids played well. And then, you know, for it to go that way. But credit the defense, man. I mean, if I was getting, you know, mauled, I'd probably throw the football away too. Take another look at it. Here it is again. This was just sitting in the zone. The pressure came and... Both the There's a guy behind, maybe yeah. just not enough, couldn't get enough on it trying yeah. to step into the pass rush, probably, right? Probably right, yeah. But both, or actually, I think it was a bunch set with three receivers. They all immediately got off the picture. And like I said, one of them did break back. And you're right, there, it probably was the fact that he couldn't get into the throw. But uh, that was just woefully underthrown. Twenty-eight unanswered in the second half for UND. Trailed 14-0 at halftime and came out on fire out of the locker room. Back-to-back -back scores, a 75 and an 86-yard touchdown drive. Then a couple empty possessions both ways, and now UND answers a 51-yard touchdown pass and the interception return for a touchdown to go up 28-14. to Ball is loose. And UND comes away with it. Did they give it to Yes, him? they did. They, they, I finally, the headlines <laughs> on the other side has finally, you know, signaled first down UND. Now, it's funny how that works because the ball's loose. A kid comes up with it. I don't care what color shirt he's wearing. He, he's got the ball. And then we all got to get together and go, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I think the kid with the ball probably would be my guess. Uh, you know, I'm not the valedictorian, but the kid who has the ball 
That would be the guy that I would say they're ball. K.J. Routabush had the hit that jarred it loose, and Brandon Thomas recovered it along the sideline and kept the ball in bounds for U. Indy to get it back. Now, Routerbush actually was one of the guys that was leading that. Uh, leading the block. Yeah, so that's two good plays in a row for that young man. Here go hand up up the middle to Buchanan for a nice game. And that's all you want to do here. You just want to use 40 seconds on the play clock. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get your lineman up there. Don't get your lineman set. I, I hate it when my lineman were, had to set up there in a stance. Just let him stand around. And then in about 15 seconds, give him the play, turn around and play football. Greyhound fans can find tons of authentic UND sportswear, t-shirts, gameware, and giftware all at houndgear.com. It's the superstore for UND fanatics. Perfectly done here by Coach Kiever's staff and Conklin. Just wait till about 10 seconds and then, then get set. Second down play. Handoff again to Buchanan. He'll run into the line. No gain. And it'll bring up third down. Free Enterprise System is the official travel agency for Greyhound Athletics. The Free Enterprise System, anything else, is just a bus ride. Talked about halftime adjustments. We certainly have seen some adjustments by UND, but how much maybe was some of the adjustment mental or just not to be down? Because this was a team that certainly was a bit demoralized going into the locker room, but somehow in 25 minutes of halftime, looked like a whole new team in the second half than they did in the first half. There's no doubt about it. We talked about how, you know, I, I think I would have reminded my kids that, you know, we do run the football. That's what we do, and we do it well. Uh, but they came out and they threw it, and uh, they trusted Conkling. They trusted his receivers, and, you know, they trusted those linemen. And Conkling with the keeper on third down. He'll dive forward and get a first down for you, Indy. And a huge first down single by Conkling, celebrate young man again. He was the backup to start the year, only became the starter because of the season ending injury to Connor Kennett. And you know, Matt, I, I know the score and, and I know how to count. And I know that things don't look good for the Bulldogs here, but I'm a little surprised uh, that Coach Nesbitt has not tried to take some time out. They do have all three timeouts. Yeah, and they're just going right home with them, I guess. And with that, Kennett will take it and take a knee. But again, credit that young man, 17 of 32, 221 yards, two touchdowns. Comes in unexpectedly to be the starter against Saginaw Valley, throws four interceptions in his first game, gets it back together in conference play, doesn't have a great first half, and two touchdowns here in the second half and really wills U Indy to victory. Yeah, and to tell you what I know, I mean, I've been saying all, all game that he wasn't much of a running threat. He basically salts the game away with a run. <laughs> so that's why, I'm, that's why I'm broadcasting now, not coaching. And a couple huge scrambles in the backfield yeah, to, keep plays, to keep plays alive. But that'll be it. 28 unanswered here in the second half. And the University of Indianapolis are your 2022 Great Lakes Valley Conference champions. Coach Kiever is there and Coach Nesbitt both. And you could see a lot of respect uh, right there by those two men. Uh, you know, sometimes those uh, those little coaching handshake lines can be a bit contentious. But uh, that was a lot of respect right there by Coach Kiever and Coach Nesbitt of Truman State. The ninth GLVC championship in school history for the Greyhounds as the Hounds move to 9-1 and one and now will await tomorrow night's selection show to find out where they were going in the NCAA Division II playoffs. Final score, 28 to 14. Stick with us, we'll be back in a moment with the Prairie Farms post game show here on the ISC and GLVC Sports Network. Back in my day, we didn't have inflatables for the kids. They played with sticks and stones and they liked it. Portillo's is unbelievably excited to serve their famous Chicago-style street food in Indianapolis on US 31, just south of Stop 11 Road. We are looking for top dogs to get paid daily, have a flexible work schedule, and will get free shift meals. Apply at portillos.com careers. Meet Chip. 
30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about Chip. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Getting ready for the trophy ceremony is the Great Lakes Valley Conference staff. There's the trophy, there are the championship t-shirts, and you see the final score, number 14, UIndy, 28, Truman, 14, UIndy winning its ninth Great Lakes Valley Conference championship with 28 unanswered. They went into the locker room down 14 to nothing, and they come out in the second half, hold Truman scoreless, and finally get the offense going. You mentioned programs, that you've got a couple of programs here. You know, how much of that kind of is a program to, to rally again after our first half that, you know, all the emotions of senior day, yep. championship atmosphere, and then you come out and get shut out in the first half to come out in the second half and have uh, the mental fortitude, I guess, to come out and not and, and recognize you got 30 more minutes to play. Yeah, I got to believe that at least one of the coaches made the comment that a lot of men have played here and there's a lot of legacy here, and I'll be dead gone if we're going to let it in like this. Uh, you owe it to these guys who came before you. There may have even been a couple of ex-players in the locker room, uh, you know, kind of urging the youths on. And you see the T-shirts there. I did tell uh, Assistant Asso Associate AD Ryan Thorpe that I do wear a youth medium. Uh, <laughs> so I'll see if I get one of those. But, yeah, I mean, that's and, – and hats off to Coach Desmond and his staff, too. They got a program, too. Programs just – they don't rebuild. They just reload. I mean, you get kids every year, and, and you know, you're always playing for conference championships. It seems like they are. Uh, they've won like I think 27 different conference championships in their in their long tenure, and I think I read in the notes where they were second in the conference 16 times. So that's almost 50 conference uh, championship opportunities. Um, yeah, both programs uh, showed well tonight. That was a heck of a football game. You see, Great Lakes Valley Conference Commissioner Jim Namovich holding the trophy at midfield, and there's head coach Chris Kievers and getting ready to unveil. And get ready for the pictures. You see a lot of the families. And there's the trophy in your 2022 Great Lakes Valley Conference champions, the University of Indianapolis Greyhounds. And, you know, again, you mentioned a program and those kind of things, Jim. But, yeah, every, every championship year is different. It's to do one of these kids. Yep. You know, and, again, it's been since 2019 since UND has won the conference championship. So, you know, a little bit of a drought for their standards is everybody getting the pictures, the families, the moms down there. Say hello to my mom in Missouri who's watching. Yeah, and you know, Matt, at some point when you when you play for them a lot, when you win one in 19 and another one, it becomes the expectation. You know, it's not, hey, I hope we win. It's I expect to win. That's what we do. That's who we are. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, if you can get that kind of mojo, don't ever let go of it, man, because it's a lot of fun. And and uh, when you're when you're winning like that and playing like that, and uh, you know, I was fortunate as a high school coach to get in a situation a couple different times. But hats off to Coach Keevers and his staff as the conference champions. Yeah, and again, and and have dealt with some adversity this year. Yeah. Obviously, starting quarterback goes down midway through the season, and Connor Kennett, Toriano Clinton, your outstanding running back, misses three games here at the end of the season. And honestly, I don't think he was maybe himself today because in the second half, they went exclusively to Buchanan to kind of get him down the stretch. They fed the hot hand, had packages and plays that worked for Buchanan, did not see much of Clinton in the second half. And Buchanan coming through for UND today, eight carries, 75 yards for him. Alonzo Derrick, eight, eight catches, 123 yards and two touchdowns. But our Indiana Members Credit Union player of the game, somewhere down in there, is Christian Conkling, quarterback today. Our IMCU player of the game made some big throws in the first half, but then really stepped up in the second half. Here's his first touchdown to Derek down the sideline. And then he found Derek again later in the second half. 17 of 32, 221 yards and two touchdowns. For Christian Conkling, what did you like to see out of Conkling today, our player of the game, Jim? 
Well, again, just the dealing with the adversity and not giving up. I, I, the the fifty one yard touchdown pass, uh, you know, with about seven minutes to go in the game, was huge. I mean, I don't. Again, uh, maybe we'll get a shot of that. But uh, kid's a winner, man. I mean, he just he makes plays, and uh, players make plays, and, and players win games. And today, he was a huge, huge part of this. And again, a credit. You know, guy, he had not seen any action. His, he's a senior, had not seen any action prior to this year. He's yeah. the backup behind Connor Kennett. A credit to perseverance in yeah. this thing. And, yeah. you know, obviously, if you see better opportunities, things there, but kids transfer, whatever. This is a kid who stuck it out yeah. with no promise that he would ever have an opportunity to be the starter, steps in, and now has led UND to a conference championship with two huge touchdown passes in the second half of this game. And there he is right there in the middle of your screen. And, uh, you know, just a true leader. I've always said that uh, the leaders make sure that uh, the other guys uh, eat first. So he doesn't even have a T-shirt yet. He wants <laughs> to make sure everybody's got one. And, and then he'll go over and grab his. But, uh, yeah, just hats off to the kid. I mean, Pendleton Heights graduate here from Central Indiana and uh, had a great high school career. And like you said, maybe the college career didn't go quite as well as he would have wanted it to. But right now, I doubt he's complaining much. None of it matters now. He's a conference champion. And now our Aqua Systems play of the game. We saw a lot of offense, but then salt, salting it away, it was the defense. Yeah, this is it. This is the death knell right here. And again, just a total team effort here. Great pick, great run. Obviously, you coach kids when you get a pick, get to the sideline. I don't care which sideline, just get to one. Obviously, the closest one, uh, but some great downfield. And you call those blocks. Uh, I used to call those just kind of getting away blocks, right? Just force the defender to go around you. I mean, you can go left or right, and then the, then the ball here can make his choice. But for, just get in the way, force those guys to go around you, and then uh, and good things will happen. But don't hold and don't block in the back. That's Kevontae Houston takes it 70 yards officially on the pick six for you. India's fifth of the season, leading the GLVC. UND regular season champions. The season likely not over for Truman as the runner-up, that the highest team in the GLVC that does not make the Division II playoffs will go to the America's Crossroads Bowl in Hobart, Indiana, the Great Lakes Valley Conference versus the Great Midwest Athletic Conference. Truman will likely be that representative for the GLVC if they do not make the D2 playoffs against what we think will be Tiffin or Finley. Jim, I know you did that game last year up in Hobart, so hopefully opportunity that you might get to see Truman here again. But UND is your 2022 Great Lakes Valley Conference champion. Jim, a pleasure and glad you're able to get to join us and work with you here this afternoon. I've enjoyed it. There was nothing else I'd rather do on a Saturday afternoon. I had nothing to do in all day to do it. So when you guys gave me a call, I said I would love to. Thank you as well to our amazing crew, the truck, our camera guys. Again, a very cold, snowy day out there and bringing you all these great shots that you were able to enjoy from home. So a great credit to our crew as we wrap it up here from Key Stadium, UND. The 2022 Great Lakes Valley Conference champions, Jim Leisure. I'm Matt Holmes. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night, everybody. Back in my day, it was about family here at the University of Indianapolis. And you know what? It still is. Go Hound! Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Now get financing as low as 3.49% APR on a new or used vehicle. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters.